What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Game Over Greggy Show. I am one of your hosts, Greg Miller, alongside the producer slash seducer, Nick Scarpino. Hi, Greg. How you doing? Well. Our shirts are almost the same color gray. I love that shirt. Yeah, I do too. It's got a texture on it. It's got the texture from like the actual movie. It's I'm wearing a accurate. Batman shirt from the from the hit movie, Batman v Superman. But it's not, the, it's not the normal Batman, like the 89 Batman, which I love. But it's well, no, it's the it's, it's from the Batman. actual like Dark Knight Batman. It's Batman v Superman. This is the Batman yeah. v Superman shirt. Well, I'm just I'm setting it up for people who don't because there is a difference, right? It's more of a fatter Batman. It's more of a stronger Batman. It's more of a taller, like have sex with your nanny Batman. Yeah, that's what he does. Yeah. My God, over there the pure one, Tim Gettys. I love you, Nick. In the most, in, in it's been a year and a half since you had no facial hair, and here you are, baby face. Since so I've been this pure, yeah. How's yeah. it feeling? It feels good. I mean, I did it for one reason, Greg, and that reason is that so many people keep tweeting and saying, I didn't know that Greg was saying the pure one. I thought they were saying the pure one. And it's like, like, like the you, pure one's you not even pe- sponsoring them. The I'm like, one? I know, exactly. So no I wanted to make it that. Really? I wanted pure to make sure it's clear to people, yeah. <laughs> that I am the pure one. Pure. Mm-hmm. Got it. Pure. People really thought we were saying pure one. One guy tweeted at me. Was he high? I don't know. Probably. You don't even know what that means anymore. I can't. Uh, you, you, yeah. You look what like does you're, that mean? You look like you're 19. You don't. You don't. You, you don't have any don't world experience anymore. You have no world experience. What's in my pants? I don't know. Uh, do you remember that? Do you remember those days when Tim didn't know it was in his pants? He didn't know how to use that it. That was. Uh, yeah, I do remember because it was only about five years ago. <laughs> it wasn't even five years. There ago. was a time when Tim was like just like years. holding hands with Tim was just too much. He was like, I don't that want there it. to be any sort of implication behind this or any commitment to this. And now I have a love and sex friend. advice show. Yeah. That gets seen by millions. And he never we never talk Almost. about it online, but Tim is the nastiest <laughs> out of all of us. Is he? Oh my god. I'm guys, nasty no as one's fuck. ever heard this, but like I you, you the conversation in there about into that what? Anything you want. Really. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah right. My choice. And uh, rounding up the group today, filling in for Colin Moriarty, Vernon Shaw. Hey. Now uh, stop, it, stop Ladies and gentlemen, you might not know Vernon Shaw by face or name, but you know his handiwork. He invented, he created. Hot Pepper Gaming. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. I Yay. always tell people that it's, it's kind of tough that the most successful thing I've ever done is the dumbest idea I've ever had. No, no, that's I li- good. I like it a lot. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. It. That works it's out. a lot of fun to work on. Thanks for eating those things, guys. Oh, yeah. Thank, <laughs> thank, dude, honestly, we do a lot of dumb shit here at Kind of Funny. I can but tell. it's like, we, yeah, exactly. I've seen your products. I know. But, but those videos are like some of my favorite things that we've ever done. And thank people you so love much, that man. shit. Whenever people are like... What what are my favorite kind of funny moments? The hot pepper stuff comes yeah, up. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Hot yeah, pepper yeah. game is great. Yeah. Oh man, if you guys it's ever want to come idea. back, let me know. Anytime. Oh, yeah. Anytime there's a Batman game, I'll be there. You know right? that. Yeah. That's the deal. That's <laughs> the blood Can we pack. talk really I'm quickly good. about your hardening bat nipples? <laughs> it was unexpected. You know what I mean? Out of all the things that were happening in my Batman review there of mm-hmm. Arkham Knight when I was wearing mm-hmm. the bat suit, I didn't, I didn't, I was not cognizant of the nipples getting hard when the peppers kicked in. Oh, but the fan base was. Oh, the fan base was very well. The gift. It. Lots of gifts from that one. The bat nips, man. The I mean, they nips. were a thing before, but you brought it back. I it's, did. I feel like it's Thank because you, Schumacher. there are so few moments in life where you can actually see the nipple getting hard. You're yeah. aware of it once it's hard. It's true. But like actually seeing it go from soft to hard, from the transition phase, from flaccid yeah. to erect, yeah, uh, is something to behold. It, it is. really is. I was happy to do and live all that for you on youtube.com slash hot pepper gaming. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But first. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Game Over Gregory Show. Each and every week, four, sometimes five, best friends gather on this table. Each bring a random topic of discussion for your amusement. If you like that, head over to patreon.com slash kindoffunny and toss us a few bucks to get every episode early, along with a bunch of bonus content. And this month, January, to fund Kind of Funny, the animated series, we are so close to our $75,000 goal. Go there. Even if you've never donated to us on Patreon, just give us a buck for this one month, February Erase it. Delete your Patreon pledge. We don't this mind. This is the last week. This is your last chance for us to bitch and moan about this. Yeah. And then we'll all complain about how episode nine ends on a cliffhanger. We'll never we'll know never what happens know. 10, 11, Imagine 12. if we did that. Like, one of us dies. And it's like, or it's just like, Or it's like the end of Seinfeld where like we all go to jail for no reason and it's super fucking dumb. I don't know if Colin will allow that. If you don't have the bucks to toss, no big deal. Head over to YouTube.com slash kind of funny where we post the show day by day, topic by topic until the entire thing is up is one big video for free and one big MP3 for free. Nick. Yeah. You're going to lead off today. Usually we have the guests go, but a lot's been happening 
in our world, my world in particular, yes. me. So your topic is about something I care my about. My topic is why I'm putting you. It's about the latest round of things that have come out of the DC camp. Mm-hmm. Namely, last night there was an event. I believe Kevin Smith hosted it, and this yes. is where Jeff Johns showing, was on there. Jeff Johns on there, uh, and they showed quite a lot of things. So I wanted to get your perspective. We haven't had a chance to break it down yet, so right. I wanted to use this as the opportunity. We did the GameSpot video where we Tim and I video. did the suicide thing, frame by frame. And I and I that was awesome, and it ran a little bit longer uh than the normal video but it was such good content that i'm like i bet we could talk more about that i bet well that i mean it, what i'm saying is that it was so it was just him and i talking it wasn't opinion based it was just about the facts yes. of it all. i don't know what you think of any of this right. i don't know what vernon thinks of any of this there's so much things so many things happening in the <laughs> we're, we're, we're gonna find out if i know what i think about this too okay have cool. you seen these things? I haven't seen the new Suicide Squad trailer. Man, we suck at preparing bitch. for things. Yeah, you yeah, know what? Yeah, yeah. He asked me, and I was like, I don't think we're going to talk about that on the show today. <laughs> Good job. So Thanks, I told him not to watch it. Do you want to excuse him for five minutes so he can go yes. watch that trailer? I'll prep it, I'll prep it on the right. iPad and send Vernon out. You should send him the uh, set, set him up with the Wonder Woman footage, too, because I want to talk about that as well. I saw that, though. Oh, Did there you, you go. Okay. I see all that. Okay, cool. Strong shoulders. Yeah. Very. What does that mean, strong shoulders? Gal Gadot has good shoulders. Gal Gadot has everything. Great shoulders. She's one of those rare human beings that, like, just makes you as me not you i mean you guys probably have more self-confidence than i do but i look at her and i'm like i'm just a, f- a piece of pond scum on your Damn. Shoe. pond scum yeah just like you walked over me and it made your sh- and all, and you made, i made your foot just a little slippery for a second and then yeah. you never thought about me again that's how i compare to gal gadot mm. see mm. I, I disagree i think gal gadot has <laughs> kind <laughs> eyes slippery. she has kind <laughs> eyes she could easily be there to she wouldn't forget you she oh. wouldn't I don't. I, I have no doubt the woman is an angel and, yeah. and, and a beautiful kind soul. Eyes. But I'm just saying, like she's when you when you look at her, a she's super accomplished. Yes, she's good. She actress. was in Fast and Furious. Now she's wonderful. She Roman. was in super accomplished. I just Fast see her as family. Movies. She is family, wow. um, and she's just so good looking. Yeah, that it makes me feel like a gnome, like a garden gnome. I That's like your like garden theme. This coming out of pond. the bushes a little bit to bite you right on the heel. What? Sure, and then sure. I, I run back so in. Garden yeah, garden do. gnomes, little biting garden gnomes. What the fuck do what do garden gnomes do? Nothing. They sit there. It. They travel you off around it. the world. It's a good commercial. What that Earth is, is DC universe? Like, what would it be? Earth five five six. Is there a number? That's Marvel shit. Get out. Oh, of DC it. doesn't do that. No, they, what do they do. Call there's the Earth Earths? twos and there's the fifty two and all that stuff. This is just Earth. Don't, don't just worry. Just Earth. Let's not. Let's not even worry about. It. Okay. Let's not even get into the multiverse right now and confuse everybody. Okay. We finally have a DC cinematic universe. Let's just stick let's with just it. Call it that. Let's not getting crazy about okay. anything. So let's take it off the top. The big news right. big, was was the second Suicide Squad trailer. Sure. Which they're saying is the first official trailer. So I was instead right. of the Comic Con trailer, which I think is garbage. So just, that was a teaser. The Comic Con was a teaser. I, they, they didn't they say need teaser. To, no, they need to qualify what counts as a trailer versus. I think they just need to get over themselves and that there's been two trailers. Yeah. Period. I don't understand. My it used to be, and at least in my brain, and I could be wrong about this, but it used to be like a teaser was like thirty seconds. Yeah. And a trailer was like a full one minute to two minute long trailer. I mean, but now it's like you get a trailer that drops. A teaser that drops, it's five and a half minutes, and you're like, ah, oh, it's just a teaser, man. It's not a trailer until we tell you it's a trailer. So what did you think of the trailer? So I liked it. My first impression was uh, this is very much similar to what's happened with me in Deadpool, where I watched that first trailer, and I was like, that's pretty the cool. The Comic-Con trailer. The Comic-Con trailer. Then I watched this one, I'm like, I'm getting more of a, um, a, more of a sense of the tone of the movie, mm-hmm. and I, I kind of like where it's going. Um, namely, anyone who's uh, fun enough to use Queen... Right uh, for for the and actually edit to those beats. Yeah, yeah, has at least a style in mind when they're when they're when they're dealing with this right. picture. And I think that it's going to be. My hope is that it's going to be super funny and super fucking dark. Like it won't be super dark. I want it to be like I want it to have the intensity of Dark Knight, no, but with the humor here. of Iron Man. No, That's, that, that doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even a world that exists. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I I liked it. I will see it. It's still sort of middle of the road for me, though. Truth be told, like I, I'm still not. I like I was telling you earlier that like some of the Harley beats, none of those, none of those worked for me. Like every time really? she said anything, I was like, oh, yeah, I, that was a missed like, opportunity. The voice is in her head, and she does. It, it, I was like, that is awesome. The yeah, entire but then delivery she's like, though, awesome. at the end, she breaks open the thing, and she's like, get over it. We're bad guys. This is what we do. Yeah, yeah. and you're like, well, I get that, but you know, it doesn't have the what I want it to have. And again, we're all a bunch of big babies who so are just whining about. This I'm not whining at all. I love the trailer. I thought it was awesome. But what I really liked out of like when we saw the Iron Man trailer for the first time was you got a sense of how quippy and how quick that uh, that, that that sharp that dialogue was going to be in that film, right? Where he's like, "No gang signs," you know, things like that. Where you throw it up, and he just yeah. fucking sold it. Like everything that came out of Robert Downey Jr.'s mouth just worked. Like when he has the speech where he's like, "That's how Dad did it." 
It's worked out pretty far so well, or pretty okay so far. Sorry. And everybody's like, are you drunk, Iron Man? I She's like, I'm not even Iron Man yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, my, my, my disappointment with the trailer wasn't that, I mean, I think it's going to be a fun movie, and again, I'm going to see it, but I, there's no wow moments. And I think this is- In a, that trailer. I think this is a bigger problem in general with just trailers right now, for because we're getting bombarded by these superhero trailers. And sure. like, it's all just starting to sound the same. That's my theory. That's my that, that's my take on this. Vernon, it's fresh in your mind. What do you yeah, think? Yeah, I, I literally just watched it. I, I would I would uh, I would argue against that. I, maybe if I'm just taking a DC centric look at superhero movies, but yeah. up until this point, okay, uh, we've we've only been dealing with like really gray movies, man. Like just really, really just like gritty superhero-y movies, like right. you know, like Batman Batman Begins style movies. Like that worked for them for a while, and they've mm -hmm. been doing it for a bit. This is the first DC thing that I've seen that's it's like you felt a style and you felt like pushing against something like a preconceived norm of like this is the gray movie where we have shaky camera when people fight. So I'm really I I was not stoked for Suicide Squad up until literally just 30 seconds ago. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> see for me I'm that trailer did exactly it was the best trailer possibly could have been for that movie i agree with nick in the sense that like whatever this is this movie's gonna happen and it's gonna be fine i'm not like this is not star wars by any stretch of the imagination sure. it's not even a, like it's not fast and furious it's not something that i'm like oh my god I, established I, I, I franchises that you love yes but, it's but, not those things well no but even even then though it's not like something like deadpool that i'm like i am stoked to see deadpool it is similar to deadpool and then i'm like all right it's gonna be whatever it is like it's not gonna be a game changing movie. And uh I think the trailer was awesome. It was very, very cool for all the reasons you guys were saying. I like it. I love the the music thing. And uh it has a nice vibe to it. At the same time, it's like it doesn't go far enough for what I would like that movie to be. But at the same time, I don't really know what I want that movie to be because exactly. I don't really know what the fuck the Suicide Squad is. Now we keep talking about Guardians of the Galaxy in other videos we've done, where this is DC's Guardians in the sense that no one knows who the characters are, and it's it's bad guys. Even the Guardians, they're criminals. They're not bad guys. Whatever. Expectations are low. Grouping together, yeah, exactly. There's no preconceived thing of what this should be. Yeah, you know. Having said that, this does have the Joker and Harley Quinn, so there is kind of at least some point of we know what this is. Mm -hmm. Whereas Guardians, it was all just fucking new, new sure, shit. Sure, you sure. Know? Um, but Guardians also had the luxury of coming after so many movies that had built up this whole thing this is coming at a time when all we really have to go off now is man of steel mm -hmm. and they're obviously co-promoting this with batman v superman to kind of like catch up and i feel like this is them kind of jumping ahead years to what marvel did and i think it they're doing a good job of it like i think that these trailers coming out the way they are and this trailer being this trailer this is them being like all right we're we're where guardians was at that time it's a risky maneuver, and I don't know if it's going to pay off necessarily, but I, I think that they did a really good job on selling me of like, oh, shit, this is exactly what it should be. So okay. so you're saying your perspective is they're able to – you think they're actually going to be able to skip that that whole – the whole Iron Man generation altogether, and no, they're, one. they're doing that. That that generation exists, right? Aquaman, One Woman, Cyborg are all introduced in uh, Batman v Superman, right? right? And then they have solo films. Well, what I'm, well that, I'm not saying that. I mean, two, though, I mean, like, they don't have to. Like what Tim's saying is that they're they're trying to be more strategic and not have to like and ride the current wave, right? Like this, it's a it's a distinctively different set of circumstances now than it was when Iron Man One came out. Sure, right? they they have so much more going for them. We're like. You don't have to define what a comic book movie is anymore. Mm -hmm. We've mm -hmm. already seen like the good, the bad, um, the ugly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Had to go there. Um, but we've already seen good, bad, serious, fun, sure. whatever. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. so I think what Tim's saying, and I think it's a valid point, is that I think that coming out with a trailer like this, Queen, it's bad guys. I don't think you need to explain that as much as you would have had to 10 years ago. Exactly. And it also, this is the first time we're getting a bad guy movie. Like just that, straight up, but this see, is a villain movie. That's my point. When people start likening it to Guardians of the Galaxy, which I heard you talk about a little bit earlier, um, I, I think it's I think there's an even bigger opportunity here than Guardians, because whenever you have a group of antiheroes together, like Guardians wasn't an antihero movie. It was a movie about outsiders, outsiders, but they were still heroic. Right. Yeah, At yeah. no point did, you know, Star Lord. He was, you know, he's he for profit, but he wasn't a killer or a robber. He yeah, was just yeah. kind of he was like the Han Solo, like a little bit of a rogue, but sure, sure, sure. still a bit of a gentleman when you peel back some of the layers. Whereas these people are killers like this is this is uh, Harley Quinn, who is probably no redeemable qualities as far as as good versus evil is concerned. So you have the opportunity to do something really, really unique here that you don't have anywhere in in, yeah. the, in the Marvel universe. When I bring up the Guardian stuff, I'm actually using it as a disadvantage for Suicide mm. Squad. Like I'm not saying it as like, oh, it has all the things the Guardians had going for it. Like I was saying, Guardians had nothing going for it, right. and like 
despite that, succeeded. Whereas this is, you know, it has that. It has going, characteristics it, of where Guardians was. Exactly. Not in terms like, of there's, plot, There's the fear of that, though, because Guardians was a huge success. Right. Whereas this is like, I don't know if it's going to resonate the same way. But again, the Joker. The Joker is the factor of just like, he looked fucking awesome in this trailer. It was a different Joker. But it also had the same things of why we like the Joker yeah. and why it's such an iconic character. And I think that that's what's going to sell the normal people. The yeah. people that are like, they enjoy superhero movies without knowing what that means. And at what point do you just trust Jared Leto do, to do a good job? You know, From I, the jump. <laughs> Ever since my so-called life, I've trusted Jared Leto. <laughs> and I will continue to. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying, trying to think club. of a point when he's messed up and, or I've not liked his character. But I think uh, like if anyone's going to have a good crack at the Joker, it's yeah. going to be Jared Leto. He already seems creepy. He already seems... Scary and funny and, you know, all the things you'd want the Joker to be. Yeah, yeah. When he when he jumps into the vat of chemicals after Harley, just the way he swans the look, dives. The look of it. Just like, so like, holy shit, yeah, that's no, awesome. It's, it's really awesome. Style. And, and talking about Harley Quinn, you were saying that, like, you thought it didn't really, like, land. The jokes didn't land for you. Yeah. I liked it. I agree that, like, they didn't hit for me of, like, oh, my God, I fucking love that. The way that in Iron Man, like, I would have never even brought up the Iron Man trailer. In comparison to this, but like you bring it up, does make sense where it's like characters that right, like, like I was it starts familiar with, with. Remember the trailer I'm talking about? Bang. Bang. Oh yeah, got it in. Of course, got it. He's like, don't throw it in the game signs. I'm just kidding. Get in here, the, right? And like that, it. you're like, oh, I kind of wanted this. This already just sold me on this world and this character. And even if the action in this movie sucks, I want to spend some time with Tony Stark because he's the kind of guy that I want to watch. For exactly. And I feel like Harley Quinn has that same type of. People like her personality. You know? yeah, She's yeah, a yeah. popular character for a reason, you know, and I think that this movie, I hope at least, isn't showing us a lot. I think that the Batman v Superman trailer fucking showed so much and everyone's all upset about this. This trailer just showed a whole bunch that we don't really understand. Right. You know what I mean? It's a we lot, sat it's there really and flashy, did the, really... we sat there and did the things you don't know for GameSpot. Right. And it was like, all right, now he's wearing this and you're trying to piece together a timeline and like wonder, you know, my prediction is right. That like Harley is the center of the film for the audience. It's her origin story that then leads into this based on everything we saw. Cause we've seen her. Go, it looks like we've seen her go from Dr. Quinzel to becoming Harley Quinn. And then now she's on the suicide squad and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. And, but so for but me, I think, I think this trailer, trailer kind of just put it out there and just assumed that people liked Harley already yeah. and they didn't need to sell her so they sold people like Captain Boomerang yeah. and sold mm-hmm. all these other random and the and gave them the kind of moments yeah Harley had her moments I'm hoping that Harley has real moments in the movie and that they're not blowing that in the trailer and I think that would be very smart for them to do I hope Croc and Boomerang have moments that's you know what I mean that's the one I think that I think when I look at the trailer and you're seeing it I think you can see where Harley and Will Smith are like doing this thing, and then you're gonna have these peaks that I hope are boomerang with that beer in that one scene. Like, yeah, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, like, so what that, else is he gonna that do? That one, that is one of the moments that sold me. Yeah, where I was like, oh, this is pretty cool, and I like they're they're tugging on the old heartstrings by using Queen. I don't know why I did that. Well, it was self aware there too. Tugging on the old, oh, the tugging on the old heartstrings. Heart we're, we're all expecting like that was the moment that everyone's like, all right, shit's about to go down because we know the music, we know what happens right. there, everyone knows. And they and get to, they just, get to the just break, quiet, like, gang, 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 and him yeah. just open up a fucking beer that's amazing. that was awesome but but opening up a beer and you could tell in the middle of like they're in the middle of shit, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And he's like oh beer cool like i haven't had one of these in a while because i've been in fucking prison for like the last two years um so that's what i'm talking about when i say they have an awesome opportunity you can get away with shit like that and we believe that and we want to see the characters doing that one of the hard parts is that you're gonna you have to take inevitably and this is the hardest thing with the suicide squad in general is that you have to take a group of villains and actually root for them and so that's what I'm really excited to see how they try to do that. But that, I think that's why you're going to see these center points, right? Where I think Harley is going to be a tragic tale. Harley, we're going to see how she was a normal person just like mm-hmm. us who got abducted by the Joker and turned into this monster, right? Who's not even a monster as much as she's just completely unhinged and unbalanced and right. does whatever she wants to in the moment. And, and very then, attractive. And wow. very attractive. <laughs> I'm sure that'll work to her benefit as well. I felt like such a neat because I watched the, I watched the trailer like 20 times last night or whatever. And then somebody, I was like, I love this trailer. Da, da, da. And someone screen capped the part where she was bending over yeah, the person. I was like, never even noticed that really? like, there was like this lingering shot on her ass. I was like, ah. Eh, I mean, okay. dude, that, to me though, I think it was very smart how they did that. Just in the sense where it, I mean, I can see how you missed it because it's not. There I was is like, a lot what is she getting? On, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and what, what does it like, say in Latin? But at the same time, like. <laughs> Harley is, is has sexuality. Yeah, no, about she's her. a bombshell. She's a bombshell. They, they nailed that. And it yeah, was, like very but, apparent. So she's gonna be this tragic character that we're mm-hmm. drawn to. I think Will Smith is the exact same way. Even from that first trailer that they put out, the, the Comic Con trailer, mm-hmm. you know, it's him in his civilian clothes as Floyd walking with his daughter. Right, like that's the thing that's going to happen. I'm sure he's put into this life of crime to generate money or income or save his daughter. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be one of those so like, don't those- know, he's a cold blooded killer, but. 
he does it for he was doing it for good reasons right. or you know what I mean like those will be the ones Croc is not gonna we're never gonna like Croc Croc's not right? gonna be the yeah, yeah, yeah. character yeah Diablo then, might like Diablo in like they're already setting up in the trailer of him being in that like he's a fire based guy and he's in this like water tank and then mm. they pour, he's clearly being tortured by Alpha One or whatever or you know being put through the paces to see if he can make the Suicide Squad there's something there Katana uh, it wasn't in this trailer but in the Comic Con trailer she's crying at one point right and her whole thing is that she has the blade right that has all the souls of everyone she's ever killed and she can communicate with i mean maybe she killed her father i don't you know what i mean like there's going to be weird yeah. things in there that well but to be see that that ex- that makes me excited to hear right because the most fascinating villains and or antagonists in any yeah. story are the ones that but you know there's that old, old saying that the best antagonist is uh, uh, the person that believes that they're the protagonist sure. of their own story. Yeah, they and think so they're a hero. They like seeing that these people are real and seeing that they're going through torture, and but they just for some reason have to do bad. Yeah. is fascinating. To yeah. Me. yeah, not in, not in regards to Harley because I mean I I agree like Harley's just probably going to be you're right. I think she's going to be more of a tragic tale. I don't think there's going to be a lot of redemption in her story. Yeah, but with the Floyd Lawton character or with uh, who's the RoboCop um, the guy from The Killing. Can you give me a little bit more of like what he does in the movie trailer he's that the, I just watched? I can help you there. Goatee, blonde. I think he's not boomerang. Um, that's that's Jay Courtney, right? Yeah. Who's the other guy? The guy that's like the leader of the squad. Oh, Flag. Captain Rick, Rick Flag. Flag. Yeah, Rick Flag. So I, what do we know about his character? Is he's he, like he's a government official. He's not a criminal. Okay, so he's he like the guy will, put so he's on, one he's of the main on the ground characters. to like make sure these guys go right. out there and do their job. So I feel you know that's that's an opportunity right there too where he can have back and forth a lot. Exactly. Like we're two guys on the same. And that's the other thing too is like coin, right? Enchantress right is the mo- is you know the moon character or whatever and she has this witch uh, possessing her and it, it, based on the first trailer what I pieced together in the second trailer is that when she goes in that cave it somehow gets like locked onto her possesses her or whatever it's part of her and she has a romantic relationship with Flag based on the first trailer. You know what I mean? Like there's already something that, well that, but then it's the whole thing of like Enchantress coming out and taking over and maybe being the villain of the story or at least mm-hmm. working against the Suicide Squad in this thing. There's a lot going on. I think there's it's a, a lot movie. going on. Let's shift gears for a second then. So we saw a little bit of Wonder Woman then right. last night. Uh, not not an official trailer or teaser, but we saw some behind the scenes or no, we saw some scenes from it as they right, talked Right, 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 right. Uh, her and Chris what, Pr- Pine. Why do I keep wanting to say Prine? I don't know. Brine makes me think of Brine, and then I'm, I should marinate that chicken. I keep forgetting to marinate. Or that Optimus chicken. Brine. Optimus Brine is or he's like badass. Oh, no, Greg, you must marinate that was the a, chicken. Oh, at the beginning, it was really good. Thanks. Go back to the first part. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, what were your thoughts on that? Because I, I, I have some interesting, well, my interesting thoughts, but I have some thoughts. I on thought that. it was, it was, you know, it was Can't basically. I mean, like, it was like a moving screenshot. We've had that shot of her forever, right. you know, like up against the bushes, looking through, and that one moved, and then we got to see a little bit. It's a period piece, right? Set in right. World War One. I. I think that's cool. I think it'll be interesting to see how that is. I was more interested by what Jeff Johns was talking about with it. That you know, she is uh, uh, somehow connected to the Greek gods and stuff like that. And it's like mm. that's fascinating. Well, that's how it's always been, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, most of the time, yes, but it's like. They get, I mean, how my whole thing is like the big thing we're missing, I feel like, and it's going to obviously have to be touched on a little bit in Batman v Superman. But the big thing that's crazy that I didn't expect Suicide Squad to do is Suicide Squad is going to knock down all these doors for the DC universe of like, all right, you already know aliens exist. You already know Aquaman exists. Guess what? Magic is real. Magic is a thing here. Enchantress is this and she's doing these magic. You know what I mean? Like in mm-hmm. that in somehow that, that that's when like the universe I feel is going to be so interesting and weird. And I don't know how they handle it or how they do it, but like it has a chance to be, and this is going to offend Marvel people, the most on par with its comic book counterpart. Cause in comic books, right? Magic exists. That's how it works. Don't worry right. about it. And in Marvel universe, Thor is from another dimension. Galaxy well, they they or haven't whatever. got to the magic yet. And that's where, when I'm talking about the catch up thing, I think that at the point that we get Dr. Strange yeah, and yeah. a lot more of the like outer spacey magic. Right, right, right. Justice League after dark and stuff. But what, that's what's weird about Suicide Squad introducing it and having to tackle that. And like, how does this work and how does that play in the universe? Then it does go back to, so that's happening. And is she still influenced by the Greek gods? Because that's something you can write off so easy in comic books. But like the whole thing with the DC universe, the shift in the lens they've put on it, right, is like, this is happening in your world. Mm-hmm. Superman is an alien. He has come to your planet and this is what's happening. You know, and now they're now now everyone in the world knows aliens exist. How do we react to that? And then it is, all right, now there's the Suicide Squad, and now there's magic in our world that we didn't know about. And now there is there were Greek gods in our world and we didn't know about you know what I mean? Like that's where it's gonna get really fascinating to see how they juggle all that. I feel like it I feel like it's an easy sort of I, mean, I feel like once that you bro- broach the subject of there's aliens and they've come to Earth and they have superpowers. Yeah. Really that that once you get over that hurdle, 
it's not tough to swallow the fact that there is an ancient group of Amazonians living on an island that no one has discovered or and I'm, seen. I'm fine with the Amazons. That's not even my right. argument. It's the fact that so like was Zeus real? Well, they've always you know said, I mean? but but that it hasn't that always been her her tie. Like, but again, comic was, books make. Yeah. I mean, yeah, in comic books they like talk to the god of war. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, but, but it's I, that, I mean, that's fine for me, right? Like, I mean that that. I, I don't see any reason why that would be a huge like stumbling point for people to. It's not because this is what the DC universe has done in Marvel. That'd be totally cool if they were just like, oh yeah, there's a god the fucking whatever. Let's well, go. Well, see, talk to no, him. I, I disagree with that because our only point of our, our only real point of uh, or touchstone for that is Thor, and they 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 don't they're not gods. They talked about how what was perceived as godlike was just science. To, to the to, to, to Thor's them. people yeah, yeah. and that how the gateway and, and all that stuff and like how their powers and who they are is all perfectly explainable in their world they're just immortals they live forever and they've got a su- like superpowers and they've got a shitload of like even even his hammer was like something that was man not dwar- man made dwarf made um you know so I don't think that there that's not to me that doesn't resonate on the same level as magic does where like we're like uh, uh not Shazam um Captain, Captain Marvel. Marvel, but he's Shazam now. That's what they call him. Right? Is that is a magic a creature of magic, right? right? And so, like him fighting Superman, that is a little bit bigger of a of a leap than saying like, oh, there's something out there that looks like a god, but it's not a god. It's just they're just an advanced scientific, you know, or an advanced civilization um, that has ridiculous science that we can never understand. Uh, but it's different because they have to set that up, right? Because one of Superman's biggest like uh, uh, weaknesses weaknesses is magic, sure. so they have to do that. But again, I don't, you know, I, I always when when we when people start talking about like is this stuff going to be hard to swallow or not, I always point them back to the 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 animated movies where I'm like, look, they do it right there. And I'm they not make saying they're going to do it, it wrong. Right. It's just that I thought, I mean, like I I was of the belief that for Wonder Woman's origin story, what they were going to say is that the pod we see in Man of Steel that's open among all the other dead Kryptonians on Earth, one got out, went out, went into the human race found an island and they bred for years you know i forget how long that ship had been on earth or whatever oh you bred mean the original pod generations yeah oh, yeah the, the, one see. of the scout ships remember that Got eventually it. cal finds that, that would have been interesting that would have been interesting because well, that would have been an easy way to explain how this is because again I mean, the hang-up i have is that marvel's universe thor comes down oh it's just normal dust like it totally makes sense because the comic book movie for marvel is a comic book come to life whereas dc's argument is like this is your world, and now, and this is what would happen if heroes really became real. So, I mean, if right now, if right now, mm. Superman had all of a sudden appeared in our world and fought Zod, I'm like, fuck, aliens are real. That's crazy. We thought we've all, most people think probably aliens do exist, and there's other universes. That's insane that somebody had the technology to get here. But all of a sudden, fucking Wonder Woman walks ashore, and she's like, oh, we've been all living there. We're the descendants of Zeus and shit. We're like, what? Fuck, Zeus was real? Where has <laughs> yeah. he been? What's happening? <laughs> What's up with her? What about Buddha and Jesus? Do you have them too? Like, wait, whoa, we got to talk about, you know, well, theology I, I mean, here. I, 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 I feel what? you. I feel you only as far as on the world that Nolan set up, but uh, but and the world they try to set up in Man of Steel. But when you're going back to the DC's origins, I don't have to explain this to you. Is like it's quite the opposite of what you're talking. Oh, about. Oh sure, no, Marvel and that, but is that's the what I'm world. talking about the movies. That's but what I'm see, saying. to me, the movies like when you say that, I, that that's something that doesn't sit well with me because I look at Marvel and I'm like, everything's easily explainable in Marvel. Like Hulk is a scientific experiment. Right. Iron Man, super smart guy. Uh, Captain America, scientific experiment, yeah. Thor, alien. So all of those are things that I can explain. But like, like, and I disagree. Like, what if they put magic in there? I just don't think it would. I'd be like, that's fucking weird. That I mean, seems they're off about to. Me. to and with I mean, but, and, and it's fine. I mean, all this stuff is super, is super easy. But I, I forgive DC for all these things because that to me is what DC has always been about. Sure. And I look forward to it. I'm like, oh yeah, perfectly. I'm, I'm, and that's the whole thing. Is, I, when I'm they sure. Said that. Like, I'm that sure they're going to gonna explain this all in a way that makes sense. Right. I'm just saying that I was thinking. They were going to go a different direction. It would have been cool, though. but like, how many people would have been pissed off and be like, you can't that, oh, fuck with Wonder Woman that dude, much? Dude, when this rumor surfaced like two years ago, everyone was livid. She's just another Kryptonian. You know what I mean? Why, why were you the fucking vacation house for Krypton? <laughs> <laughs> but back to the footage. Right. I, I thought it looked good. I thought it looked interesting. It's yeah. a thing I want to see. I love that she was riding up on the enemy soldiers and pulled out her sword and fucking cut one. It's like, yeah, let's it's, it's fucking it's, fuck it's, some shit up, Wonder Woman. It, Amazon it, Warrior. It reminds me of like the World War II stuff we saw in Captain America. Yeah, exactly. Right? Where, I mean, obviously it's not World War I. I think it's World War I. It's World War I, right? yeah. But I make that. But totally that, different. It's, yeah. I'm Colin. If Colin would hear, I'm sure. I, well, he, he's, it, but it's I just similar mean, and it reminds I, you. Exactly. Like, looking right. at it, you're like, oh, this looks a lot like Captain America. Um, so, that's, so that's cool. And I like that they chose to set it in that in that period, right? Because that, what that tells me is they're like, okay, so, you know, we realized that we should have probably had two or three Wonder Woman movies before introducing her. But let's go back and now tell her origin story a little mm-hmm. bit more clearly. And let's set that at a different time period. So it's so differently, so far removed from Batman v Superman yeah. and Justice League. 
um, that you'll feel like it's its own insular story. Yeah. Because it would be really like one of the things that I you always have a big problem with or you don't have a problem with, but you always kind of have to clarify is like if that story were happening during modern time, well, then how would you explain away the fact that Superman and or Batman's not around? Right. Mm-hmm. So let's put it in, let's put it in, you know, the 19 the turn of the century, 1900s. Yeah. Um, and that makes sense to me. Um, but I mean, I look at the action in it and I look at the way it looks and I'm just like, I don't know, man. I just, there's again, I will see it. It looks cool, but there's nothing in it that, that goes, that I connect with. That I'm like, I have to, I have to see this. Right. I totally feel you on that. I think you, know, we, you brought up during, uh, one of the Colin Greg live today, right. That that one kick scene they had looked weird. Totally. I mean, I look at that and I'm like, the, the whole, all the footage they showed could not care less. And I think, and I think honestly what it speaks to is the fact that like, we wanted to be a part of this. We want to show that it's coming and we're, this isn't, we're not trailer ready, right? Yeah. None of the visual effects are ready to go. This is what we shot so far. Like yeah. Chris Pine in the interview is hair is cut. Like he's like still filming. You yeah. Know what I, mean? I, like, I have no doubt that that's the case. You so know? they were like, yeah, let's, you know, ride this wave of getting everything out there and talking about all this stuff and put out what we have and what yeah. we have is not. And, and having said all that too, it's like what Nick was saying. I'm gonna watch it, and oh, like, yeah. I'll, I'll see from there. But this, it's just like Thor. Thor, there's no trailer Thor could have put out that would have made me have been like, I'm so Dog, Thor. I need Thor. <laughs> like, but then I saw Thor, and I'm like, ah, yeah, wow, enjoyable. It yeah, was, yeah, it was yeah, okay. Exactly, like exactly. that yeah, wasn't yeah. bad, right. you know. And I, I think Wonder Woman's gonna be the exact same thing, mm-hmm. where it's like I'm definitely gonna see it. I'm probably gonna see it day one. Yeah, yeah. you'll have to because yeah, your job, I'm but. gonna see it day one. Yeah, yeah. but uh, you know, I look at that the footage and like. I, I wouldn't even need it to talk about it. Right. <laughs> like it's well, I, I, honestly, I mean, like, that's the thing. You know, being a DC fanboy, I was happy to get all this stuff last night. But most of the whole show was just like, all right, this is just in, you know, just some drawings and stuff. And like, okay, we see for a second what, like, their design right now for Ezra Miller's Flash suit is. And I'm like, huh, it looks different than, you know, the Flash on TV suit. Oh, that's awesome. That. Yeah, yeah. It's, it looks a little bit more armored. And there's, like, one lightning bolt here and no, like, circle. And again, concept art, you got, like, two framey things of it or whatever it's it's always fascinating to me and i know why they don't do it but like i love the flash yeah and i think i i don't know the actor's name but i grant I'm, gustin grant gustin he does such a good job on that show that yeah. it's almost like can't you call him up to the big leagues yeah i mean you know? but that's the i mean i hear you but that's the whole problem I, I mean that was always my thing when dc movies were floundering like if you're gonna put arrow in something can it just be uh Stephen amell yeah please can you just like you know, he's gonna so, be a side character back there that's shooting arrows. Like, fucking put Steven Amell in it. Like, I, I feel like I don't know. I, I that's always that's that's always been the fan dream since like the dawn of television versus yeah, yeah, movies. Yeah. There's always been like a fucking. There's always been that like that stigma of television actors like oh you're not a fan actor. And stemming back from like the late like you know 60s, 70s, and 80s. Oh, yeah, I remember like, it well. oh, in the 80s, if you were a if you were a television actor, you might you were like a fucking second class citizen. To, to movie actors sure, sure. but it's not the case anymore yeah but I mean it's just it breaks the universe and I think it's what you see with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and Agent Carter which I know people like I'm not going to take shots of those shows because I haven't watched them since season ones when they didn't click for me but the problem is that if yeah it's the same thing I, I was talking about with Jessica Jones right where it's like all right, we've introduced to this world Superman, Batwoman, Wonder Woman, all these different things, right? And then Flash and Arrow go back to their own things, and they can't use this, those villains that they were using before. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, this is the thing. Well, why don't you call the Justice League? Why doesn't everyone come down and swing in and help you for this threat that is trying to end existence? Right? right. You know what I mean? Like they have their own little universe. And I, I, what I'd love, and I know they went to this either though, is now that the multiverse is introduced in there, is to have, yeah, have somebody step through the portal, have Gal Gadot step through for an episode, right? Of like, yeah. oh, in my world, this is what happened. I saw. Well, I mean, but even that, like. Like, are we not as a society smart enough to distinguish between the two? Like, can you not just I don't be think like, I get it. This is different. They can't do this. It's different over here. We it's can not that you can't. Me. I mean, that's what they're asking you to do now. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. Right. I think it's when they are in the same world that it gets weird. Right. And the production values aren't. It's because the rules. Know. I mean, that's the thing. It's just like what shit that happens in the TV show has repercussions for the movies. But what if people didn't see the TV show? And then it gets kind of shitty. You know, that happens a lot with a lot of. Oh, no. Things. I mean, trust me. I understand it. I'm just saying, like, at this point, who cares? Okay. You know, like, Ezra Miller's really suit matter. looks cool. That's cool. what you missed. They talked. What I liked about it was the angle they were talking about every one of them and having how every one of these heroes inhabits their own space. So Superman, Sky, Batman's like Earth or whatever, Wonder Woman's magic or whatever the fuck you want to do, call it. Uh, <laughs> Wonder Woman's islands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Aquaman's, <laughs> Aqu- islands. Aquaman's, you know, working in the water or whatever. Cyborg, they were talking a little bit, showed it. it, it I couldn't even describe this. He looks like Cyborg. You know what I mean? What mm-hmm. you've seen for Cyborg already. But how he is like the digital realm, right? Like he's dialed into everything that's so like his, you know, Oh, can we please get a DC Hackers movie? Oh, you will. Sure, that'll be the cyber <laughs> oh, movie for sure. Dude, so Hackers good. has been on my Netflix queue for like the past six months, and I yeah, just man. keep it there to feel good about myself. It yeah, just dude. makes me feel right. I'm glad this exists. 
Yeah, I'm glad like, this sorry, sorry to bring the, bring up hackers. At, at no, a very important that's time. how the show works. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry about it. Oh, uh, and then so that's happening. You got him, and then Flash is going to be more time based in terms of he can now like he. And granted, this happens in the TV show. And it's always been a thing with mm-hmm. Flash or whatever, but he can get to the past easily. Like that's a power he controls or whatever. So that and like being able to go between dimensions or whatever shit like that. Like live in the dimensions between seconds. I don't know. It sounded interesting in terms of like here's that's a here's a flash that's way more powerful or at least is using his powers in a different way where he can manage it, right? Because like on the TV show, it's always like Cisco. I was running and another flash showed up next to me. Like, oh, you're going back in time. Everything's gonna go shitty in this episode. Watch. <laughs> that was yeah. That was fucking cool the first time they did it. And then the second, actually, it was cool both times they did it. Yeah, because second no, time he was like, oh, I know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. This is cool. Yeah. What should I do? And then it was a moral conundrum. Um, it, but it really wasn't. I, hey, everybody died in the timeline. I was just in, guys. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna, gonna tell I'm you gonna everything that just shit. happened. That was yeah. That was lame because that was the crossover episode. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. That was dumb. That yeah, that scene specifically, you were like, it was really good. Okay. You should watch it. Yeah. The show, the shows are great, but that scene specifically, you were like, what, what? Like what? But the Vandal Savage character, I think, is, is he's awesome. Is fucking Vandal awesome. Savage. Yeah, Vandal Savage. Yeah. Looks All like right. Neil Druckmann. You might have sold. It's a lot like Neil. Lot like Neil Druckmann. Yeah. Holy shit! You don't know who Vandal Savage is? No. Do you know who Neil Druckmann is? I do. Okay. Do you have imagine you Neil Druckmann if having his name knives. was Vandal Savage? He'd be unstoppable. Imagine Neil Druckmann with knives, and that's Vandal Savage. Oh my god! And he's like not a. Yeah, he's pretty much mortal. Okay, uh-huh. I'm into it. Um, that's interesting. Uh, I I feel like they're. That's gonna come with a big set of circumstances, plot point wise. You know, if they, if you, whenever you have that many powerful characters, you're yeah. gonna, it's hard to write for that. And I mean, g- keep in mind, I'm taking this from a two sentence thing. Sure. Jeff John said on CW. You know what I mean? I'm sure the yeah. movies are gonna put a few yeah. more limitations on it. I'm I sure just, the Greek god thing will be explained a bit differently. You know, what his powers with the past and time travel. Yeah, are. I guess the only thing I have, the only thing I, you know, would take a little bit of. Not offense to, but I guess the only thing I would probably be a little bit put off by is is the I is the notion that the Flash is that powerful, like because they've already kind of overdone it with Superman a little bit, just punch harder. And I wonder. If <laughs> well, that's gonna... just that's just bad Superman writing. Yeah. But like the time stuff. Can we but stop I mean, like I don't know. You time? again? We're I mean, well, the cosmic treadmill's been around for everybody. I mean, like there's all these different things. Of, First like, of all, they need a better name for the cosmic treadmill. They, no, they, yeah, yeah. They they know, way better. One. Like, look, what was what what. Uh, what is it? Was Silver Surfers just a surfboard? Is that what yeah, they called it? Yeah, they called them cool. stupid surfboard. That's cool. Get your the surf- Silver Surfboard, bro. Yeah, getting the, cosmic tre- the Cosmic Treadmill Yo, sounds dudes. like the kind of shit that you'd see like late night infomercial programming. Yeah, it, wasn't, it wasn't the best name things, but or it was the 80s like, and a lot of things were happening. Like, Nobody cared no, about that's it. Fairly, that's fairly true. Yeah, but I'm interested to see. I don't know. It was like when they put up the concept art and you have them all there, it's like, fuck, this is going to be interesting. You know what I mean? Because I yeah, mm-hmm. at this point, I'm still so stoked just when I see the... The TV spot that has all three, you know, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman, and I'm like, fuck, I can't believe I'm alive for this, let alone if I don't die before <laughs> Justice League comes around, they're all doing all this shit. And then the other big announcement that I, I thought that hasn't been getting a lot of talk, uh, which was interesting, is that Jeff uh, confirmed that, like, Green Lantern is coming to the Justice League, Green Lantern will be in the Justice League, the Green Lantern Corps is a thing. Like that's gonna be, and that's got a movie now in 2020, 2020, 2020. which I don't know, had it been announced before, and now he's just confirming the Justice League thing. But it's, int- I mean, they made a big deal about it at the end of the thing that that was one of their announcements. So that's super awesome to have that, and I hope they don't fuck it up again. That's awesome. Oh, man. Did you? Yeah, I was, I was, again, I go back to the animated uh, stuff that they're doing. Like the animated show was so good. Yeah. That CG show was so good. All you have to do is do that. Just do that again. Literally, take the fucking scripts from that and, and do it. Yeah. Get Nathan take Fillion it, in there. Put a, get, get a couple of screeners together. Don't let them fuck with it. Just let them cut out the non-essential parts and make three movies out of it. And boom, there's your Green Lantern trilogy. Because it was a fucking awesome story arc. Um, they won't. I know. It'll be training again. It'll be origin again. It'll be, it probably won't. Will it be Hal? I, that, I, that's the thing. I, I don't think it will be. I yeah, bet it'll be John not. Stewart. Yeah, probably. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. No, I wish that would, that'd be cool. Um, I, I also know. hope Mogo's in it. Mogo is the, pr- the, the premier pod, planet. The premier planet. In any comic book universe. Good lord. Mogo. This is where we're fucking Oh, Mogo is the, uh, he's the Green Lantern planet, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. That's ridiculous. I thought, who was the, who was the ball that floats around? Not Mojo. Um. <laughs> Pray for Mojo. <laughs> I'll Simpsons look this reference. up. Oh, God. Yeah. I'll look this up. Monkey knife fights, yeah? <laughs> I got you. Um, no, it was, I thought it was fun. It was cool. Uh, Suicide Squad was the biggest thing. I thought the Wonder Woman stuff looked fine, but again, it is just like. Bushes, it got me. It got me glasses. as excited as the Bush's screenshot. I'm like, nah, all right. Yeah. I do, There was that one. There is that one shot of her uh, in the Wonder Woman outfit, like walking through like smoke or something. And I was like, no. Oh, I mean, cool. she, she looks, looks fucking good. incredible. Like, yeah. Yeah, like that's I, her as Wonder Woman sold. I for one can appreciate a good collarbone. Yeah. Like I really do enjoy a good collarbone. And let me tell you, like she's got him. Yeah. Great. <laughs> and then yeah, man, is, uh, Superman stuff. Yeah. What they show for that? I didn't see that. Stuff. It was recut stuff from other trailers and whatever and then like 
two, one or two frames where I was like, I don't think I've seen that before, but it wasn't like, oh, anything like that. What'd you do if they were like, cool, we're just going to show you a brief snippet and they showed you the entire movie? <laughs> record, so, record, record. It was already recorded. It's still out there if you want to go watch it again. Nah, I'll be fine. I watched it a couple times. I won't lie. I'll be all right. Tim. Yes. What's your topic? My topic is Vernon. Hey. I want to talk about you. Sure. You're yeah. so fascinating. Am I? You have so well, much going on in your life, and I want to hear all about it. I want wow, to hear. That, that is easily the nicest thing anyone said to me all week. There you go. Thank you. For there that. you go. Um, I want to hear stories about sure, your yeah. life and what you do specifically. So I appreciate a good YouTube video, but even more than that, I appreciate strategy. On oh, YouTube thank you. And like the idea of viral videos and making a viral video, whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Um, but you got a good grasp on it. So I want to hear you, so. Hot Pepper Gaming yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. Tell us the whole well, story. Well, there, there's a couple things uh, that I've been doing this entire time as uh, in my YouTube. It's, it feels weird. It will never not feel weird to say like my YouTube career. <laughs> um, actually, the reason why I'm up here in San Francisco is because I uh, actually quit my day job to focus on more uh, youtube stuff. Thank we you. appreciate We're that. We're quite familiar we with that. We appreciate that. that. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I'm I'm having a weird little little decompression victory lap around uh, San Francisco. You guys got a strange city, first of all. It's uh, the first night I was I here. I broke know. up a bar fight between uh, a homeless guy and a guy who only spoke Cantonese. And I was thinking about it. And it was like, yeah, I can't really do that in places other than San Francisco, can you? Yeah. That, that doesn't even sound that crazy. Yeah, no. Well, because a couple nights later, I was at a concert at the Fillmore, and I watched a 60 year old guy with a cane jump into a mosh pit. So. There you go. <laughs> so it, I, I think I'm getting the San Francisco stuff. You down. came. You came to. I, you'd only been here a few days, and I caught your tweet that was like, "Man, San Francisco sure is a nice city." And I honestly can't tell you if that's human shit or dog shit. And I was like, "That is most definitely San Francisco." That yeah. Is. My wife has a funny. Uh, she always she'll, she'll text me when it rains. She's like, "Great, they just uh, God just cleaned the dog shit." <laughs> If you're lucky, if you're lucky. You're lucky. Oh, no, Some no, of the logs like, I'm seeing on the street still, around it's still here. There. She, meant, she, meant, she means it physically cleaned the shit, so the shit smells like fresh again. Oh. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Anyways, yeah. yeah so, um, so I've been working uh, up until this point at a place called Maker Studios, where I started off as an office PA, but I kind of like developed a really big love for for viral videos and well, not viral videos, it was just like digital the idea culture. of that. Yeah. Making no, first off, though, a lot of people don't even know what Maker Studios is. Oh, yeah. It's a YouTube network. Mm -hmm. So. YouTube channels are just, you know, like individual channels. But then above that, there's networks that kind of represent a whole bunch of YouTube channels. And Maker is one of the biggest ones. Yeah. Like, de yeah. definitely, like, the big five, at least, mm -hmm. of whatever. And they were recently acquired by Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which um, is a pretty big company. Yeah. I, I've heard of it. So, um, yeah, I, I worked there for, for a while. I actually started off there as an office PA. And then I uh, transitioned into management. Um, so it was my job to manage YouTube channels, specifically their animation network. So the big thing with animation is that we all kind of know it. Um, like when you when you're a solo YouTuber doing animation, you kind of can't put out a lot of content. And mm -hmm. algorithmically, YouTube really favors longer content like Let's Plays or, or unboxings or things like where you can just like sit down, hang out and like have someone watch you for a while. Podcasts, I've heard of them. So um, it was a big challenge working with these animators, like trying to figure out ways to like to exist as a brand on YouTube and to kind of have like a sustainable career based on something that they were really passionate about. Because if they tried really hard, best they could do was maybe like a minute and a half worth of content a month. So you kind of had to like they, it, it was a big challenge to figure out how to take guys who didn't necessarily understand or well, didn't necessarily like fit within a YouTube architecture and find ways for them to fit into it. So. The big thing we were working on then and it kind of like transitioned in when I started working for comedy is like, how do you create like the the idea of uh, working off of evergreen content, like content that's always going to be in the cultural subconscious, uh, like we were doing it, just like talking about uh, talking about superheroes. Like, yeah. Um, so you you can't really deal with the trending topic when you're an animator. There's ways it's not it's not the best, but like the things that get big on YouTube were like people making animations of Pokemon or Harry Potter, like finding fun ways to like take something that somebody already understood and uh, riff on it or like, because it's, if, if you don't know a guy, you like, you don't want to click on an original idea. You want to click on something, you know? So if you sure. see a, a YouTube video that's like Pikachu on acid, you're like, yo, I know what a Pikachu is. Let's get into it. <laughs> and it's, no, it's, and, and it's hilarious. So like we, I started working on it with these guys and we had a couple wins and uh, around that time. And this is becoming more and more of a dated reference and I'm almost scared to bring it up, but uh, I was credited as the evil corporate mastermind behind the Harlem Shake. Oh, that's not a date. I mean, like it's dated for sure, but people know what the Harlem Shake I is. That's the thing. That, that's that you just gave them a breadcrumb. 
They yeah, don't know yeah, you. Yeah. They're like, I don't know if I like this flower hat guy. And then they go, like, oh, wait, <laughs> oh, you're the Harlem Shake, shake guy? I, I definitely know that. don't like I'm you. Hip. <laughs> yeah. I definitely don't like you. <laughs> so why why do you have why is there a negative connotation behind being the evil? You you, you said well, that no, I was first, the evil first corporate of all, like, mastermind. I, I was I was described as the evil corporate mastermind behind Harlem, the Harlem Shake by some article, and I was like, yeah, I will take the Bond villain name, of course. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> but so what does that even mean though? Because it was some random kids in a room that kind of yeah, had the yeah, first yeah. hit with that. So like, uh, you know, I was I was always that. A lot of people working digital like might have come from a different industry to like work in digital. Like, they might have been at um at a different website, or they might have come from traditional media like working in TV and film to do digital. Uh, for me, like I, I feel like I'm sort of the first generation of kids, and we're probably the, the same too. That I was like I was raised on the internet, like mm -hmm. instead of instead of going outside a lot, like I was on GameFAX forums. Yeah. And here's a shout out to GameCube You're Social. I haven't seen you guys. I love in a while. you so much. That's hilarious. Like, Hell yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so Do you know C Moriarty 311 in the other <laughs> room? You probably use his guides quite a bit. <laughs> so yeah, like was I, that really his handle? I think so. Um, <laughs> so I, I was just on it for I, I was always a part of the internet and like internet culture always fascinated me and I'm like doing digital because I like digital. Mm -hmm. Like I love working on this stuff. So like I was just the guy on Reddit like watching um, watching the Harlem Shake videos come up and like it started off on this smaller subreddit called YouTube Haiku. Which is like for like super short YouTube videos that mm -hmm. are really funny, and then it started moving over to to videos. And around the second the time like the second video came out for it, um, I I like worked really hard to like convince our entire office to do one with the with the like my my argument was that um, right now it's in the college dorm room. Like, how do you expand upon the joke? Like, the, the cool thing about internet jokes is like someone sets up a rubric for a joke, and then you get to react off of it or like invert the joke. Mm -hmm. Um, so we did that and, um, it sort of made it okay for other corporations to do it like other, other companies. Mm -hmm. So then you would see like the chive doing one and college humor doing one and like all of these different and people. IGN.com. Doing... IGN. Mm -hmm. I mean, so you, I mean, sorry to make it, you guys do that. Oh, no, if, you guys no, remember, if you remember the, when the Harlem shake was blowing up the office version, like the one that I think it was even called. Mm, yeah, like, the Harlem Shake Office Edition yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Like, they were the Office one, the first one. And then after that, like, IGN's was Gamer Office Edition. Oh, my God damn it. Yeah, no, so it, it was like, it was, it was, I don't know, man. I, I got this weird obsession with comedy on the internet and, like, how you're you're not just one person making a joke. You're an entire community of people making a joke. So you got this, <laughs> like, seriously, you're, you're this, like, entire global comedic economy, mm -hmm. like, working off of a joke that kind of has inset rules. And, like, the bigger it gets... The the more people want to like fight against those rules, so like people will find a way to invert the rules or do a weird like weird shit with it, and it's uh it's sort of a challenge to become creative inside of a inside of like a really strict rubric, and then in two weeks it implodes and you find the next joke, so it's it's it was it was really really an interesting thing to work on. It made me obsessed with the idea of like you don't necessarily need to be like the progenitor of a viral idea. You just need to be able to iterate. Yeah, further. Iterate. Yeah, quickly. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the other thing is it's yeah. iterate and fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that's it's it's. I think that's super true. I mean, look at just what's happening just in general with parody on the internet, right? Yeah. With or with YouTube, like what video, uh, Tim tweeted out, I think two, three days ago, it was like, it was two years ago, today, three years, three ago. years ago today that he um, made a Macklemore parody video for a uh, thrift shop and he mm -hmm. made it for game shop. So it was about, you know, buying used games, things like that. And like, I, at the time I was like, I, I think this is a great idea, but I don't know if it like, I didn't understand the idea of timing when it came to it. And he, he certainly put a shit ton of effort into it. And I was like, Dude, this needs to get millions of views to really warrant your time on this. And he's like, "Oh, it will," and it did. Oh, and you can't really always, you know, fucking did. You know, you can't really always predict that. And obviously, if you could, you'd be a multi multi millionaire at this point. But um, yeah, I would have flown here on my helicopter. Yeah, <laughs> I would have flown here on my own fucking jetpack. I'm like, Shh. what's up, game over, Greggy? <laughs> like, so loud, burn it, turn it off. Burn it. Our landlord lives upstairs. Please turn off your jetpack. Uh, <laughs> trying to come through the window. <laughs> Uh, but no, but that's cool. It's interesting to hear how you come come about that. Yeah, um, yeah, and and I did that for a while, and then I realized like you can't really. Uh, and sorry if I'm like getting too like businessy. No, you saw me I love I, this. You saw me if I ever do that because I, I you get two beers in me, and like I won't shut up about this stuff. <laughs> um, but um, but like I, I was really obsessed with like the the idea of a trend for a while, but then I kind of realized like you, it's kind of hard. It's it, you can't really be a brand that just capitalizes on trends you can't like you can't create something that um that you can't just like keep reacting to things and expect people to like follow you as sure. vernon shaw like be, be a fan of like the guy who did the harlem shake once so like it, then it, so i i started thinking more and more of like well what, what's like 
YouTube's a tough place because it's hard to make money on YouTube and it's hard to build something on YouTube from zero. And, and like, uh, you know, I was trying to figure out a way like, well, what's a, what's a funny, repeatable, sustainable project. Mm -hmm. And, um, from that, um, you know, after doing a lot more maker studio stuff, I, I like I started uh, leading creative development for them for digital, um, and just being the sort of like knowledge base of of like digital theory or like shareable content. And I had this obsession with shareable content, which I'm super happy to get into that too. But I love you so much. Like I just <laughs> I want you to know, we need to hang out all the time. Oh, dude! I'm, holy crap! This That's is, all I do. I got I got like speeches, man. Um, but uh, but I ended up uh, coming up with the idea for Hot Pepper Gaming. Because um, it was like, well, okay, so hot peppers are kind of a thing on the internet. Like, everybody likes eating hot peppers. There's Who like, doesn't? <laughs> most people, it turns out. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, no, uh, like, everyone I've worked with on Hot Pepper Gaming, like, a lot of the people I talk to, um, they'll come up to me a couple of months later, and, th and they'll say, like, hey, I'm obsessed with spicy food now. Like, so someone's girlfriend came up to me and was like, yeah, after he came on Hot Pepper Gaming, he just started buying those, like, jars of pickled spicy peppers and keeps trying to kiss me. <laughs> so... It, Thank you for I mean, nothing. it did that to me too. Like yeah. after I did it, I was like oh, super. Yeah. I was like, oh, I like jalapenos on my burgers now. Yeah, and you, you, you kind of get why. Yeah. Up until fucked. up until the vortex burger, you yeah. were loving. Spicy when we were in Atlanta, food. like there was one. I'm like, you know what? I'm fucking doing it, and it broke me. It really <laughs> fucking broke me. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. Mm. But it's okay. I mean, uh, I've been back. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I went down for a while, but now. Yeah, the, hell, the jalapeno down. burger from Jack in the Box won me back over. Mm, oh gotcha. man, yeah. So it, it was like okay, so that that like that's a cool thing to do, and it's like an easy thing for people to see, and a lot of people like that. And 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 then it was like, well, how do you turn that into an actual into into a a, a thing? And we were like, well, the two people I was working with it on were like the gaming industry. Like I'm a I'm a huge gamer. I love video games. But the cool thing about gamers is that they use YouTube how YouTube wants to be used. Like they, they, like people will subscribe. People will build a community around something. Like people will interact with you on Twitter. So like we, we so I was like okay so and I tweeted this one at one point. I was like okay so what if I started a YouTube channel where people try to review video games directly after eating hot peppers? And I went back and looked at the tweet and it got two retweets in a favorite. And that was enough for me to be like, like we're the, doing it. The audience loves it. <laughs> That's all it took. Can't tell you how many times people make decisions based on that. Do people want this? Like one tweet. Hey, it'd be kind of cool if you guys did that. You know what? Never mind. Don't do that. No, don't don't look at the second part. Yeah, look at the, yeah, first, look at the part. first part. Look people first part. want this shit. Yeah. So um, so I started talking to uh Aaron. Like I was working with Aaron at the time. I was actually working with Jared at the time. Uh, we were all working at Maker Studios, and like we were, we were like kicking around ideas, and like this came up, and it was like, okay, so we got a weekend. Uh, so Aaron and I like put together a set, and then Aaron's like, you know that crazy guy I know, Jared. Let's have him on. <laughs> so we kind of like formed this weird thing and we like tested out hot peppers and like we figured out that jalapeno, sorry, habaneros were the ones that kind of really just got a reaction. Yeah, got a good reaction. And we made it and then we got a couple beers afterward and I was like, I don't know about that. That was, that was a strange thing. Um, and, you know, like strategy wise, we were like, OK, so we're just going to like film a bunch of these and see if, um, you know, like after we build a library, maybe it doesn't hit on the first time, but maybe there's one like that hits Reddit or whatever, and then people work their way through the love and sex stuff. Through the yeah, <laughs> they'll they'll work their way through the 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 Playlist. library of content. Yeah. yeah, um, and then the first one we put up, which was Jared's, it uh gets features on it, it got featured on Kotaku, like a front page on r slash videos, and it's like, well, now we got to do this for the rest of our life. <laughs> <laughs> which so, is good, you know. Yeah, yeah. And we, we, I think I've finally been able to like manage it now, but like there was a point where I just couldn't keep up with the growth. Like it was like, it was really, really hard thing to deal with. Um, oh, so Well, just because I was working a full time job that, that I was doing like creative stuff. But when you then, say keep up with the growth, you mean like, like the actual business administrative part of it? Like sponsorship yeah, yeah, stuff? Yeah, I, I mean, cause so I, I have this other obsession with like the idea of sweat equity, like how much work you put into something and like what comes out of it and you know, like working a full time job and being tired all the time. Like you're, you're like, I don't know if I can film something every week. Right. So we the, know that well. Yeah. <laughs> So the cool thing about Hot Pepper Gaming is like, yeah, we can block shoot these. Like we can we can just set up as a little party on the weekends. Like the friends will come over and we'll, like we'll we'll drink American value beers and like watch people sort of like in a sense walk on the coals in front of us and we have a good time. And that's it. And then, you know, like uh, I go to edit to start and then I ended up paying an editor, which made timing a lot easier. But it was um it was a cool thing to work on because like it it, it was so compartmentalized in that fashion. Uh, but also like that's when like people kept hitting us up, like, like people, like brands wanting to work with us. Like we, yeah, like in the first year and a half, like 
we got flown to a couple different countries. It, it was a, an awful story because I didn't have a passport. So they were like, oh, come to Ubisoft Montreal. Like, we'll, we'll show you guys around. Like, have a cool time. And I'm like, well, uh, I don't have my passport, so I'm going to get working on that. Uh, Aaron and Jared, you guys go yeah. and have a great time. <laughs> Uh, so they went, they had a blast, and then they come back, and I'm like, I'm still working on my, and I didn't find out until later that you can you can expedite ship a, a passport, but two weeks later, uh, we get the offer to fly to France for, for to like film something with Blizzard, and I'm like, great, I guess I'm sending Jared, yeah. and then Jared comes back, fucking shit eating grin on his face, like, hey, I got you a present, Vernon, and it was like the tiniest Eiffel Tower <laughs> that, I, that, I, that I still keep. And and then I, I like I look at it and whenever I want to get angry, I just look at it and think about Jared. That'll work, yeah. So yeah, yeah it was like like it it was kind of like an incoming call business. Like people like it felt really cool because people want to work with us. And like up until this point, I was just a fan of video games and like I, I liked I liked playing video games, I liked being a part of the video game community, but it was like putting me into rooms with people I really respected and fucking I'm right here with you guys who I think are like the coolest guys on earth. Uh, because of a weird joke about peppers, you know. Yeah. I, I, so <laughs> so you'd like, be, you would be wrong on that. Uh, <laughs> Kevin's pretty cool. Kevin's pretty cool. Look at him. How yeah, many subscribers there. do you have now on? Uh, it, it's, it's not the biggest. We got like two hundred sixty thousand. I mean, that's, that's, that's a yeah. shit ton for like yeah, yeah. from out of nowhere. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I, I that's remember, a testament to you, you know, understanding the shit and like knowing and working mm. with Maker and working with all the creative development and stuff. And like I, at the same time, like the sort of community coming together and like people like you wanting, like thinking this is a cool idea and wanting to work with me and then us creating like cool stuff that everybody likes. So. And I mean, that's that's actually a really good point. Like I hadn't heard of it, and then Greg just acted like it was a thing. Like when Greg first talked to me about it. And this was back when we were at IGN. You're like, oh, hey, yeah. like, can you? We, we're gonna do this. Like, help me shoot it, whatever. Like, he's like, yeah, hop over gaming. Like, he said it in a way as if I was stupid for not knowing. Well, it, it was like your Mr. YouTube, and it was taking off. And that was the thing for me is that I, I heard about it the first time when I was in LA that week. When I took a week off of IGN and went to LA to make content, and we had those Game Over Greggy shirts that were like iron ons because we were gonna sell that shirt soon, and we never we didn't sell it for like three more months or whatever. <laughs> but like I was doing, and I did Epic Meal Time stuff and saw a bunch of other people. And I remember opening the computer one day in David Ballard's apartment because. I was staying on his couch and he was at work and I opened it up and it was Gary Witta. Oh, and Widow yeah. was like, I gotta get on, or maybe he had just done it. Either I gotta get on. I think it was I gotta get on the show. Okay, yeah, I, I I remember that night, like, cause cause it, it was like we were just kind of like going through like the the first growing pains, like we were kind of in a plateau. It was like, okay, so thirty thousand subscribers is cool, like we we did it, guys, like yeah, yeah. we really made it. And then um and then um the guy from sorry, his name is escaping me right now, the Gone Home guy. Oh, Steve Gaines. Yeah, yeah. He, he's the one who found us, and he started tweeting out about it, and Gary Witta's like, yeah, dude, sure. And I was like, you're Gary Witta, though. <laughs> 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 so, like, it, there, there are so many stories of uh, people just being down to do weird things and, like, figuring stuff out via Twitter. Like, we got Andrew WK on yeah. Pop Ever Gaming just because we tweeted him, and he was a cool guy. Yeah. That's fucking so, awesome. Insane night, by the way. He he, he, he parties a, hard, I hear. He's a partier through and through, but, but like, the, like, not even the partying, is, like, that didn't even perplex me. Like, we were shooting in Aaron's apartment uh. at the time. And Aaron, her bathroom door is broken, so it doesn't close all the way. So, like, whenever we do Hot Pepper Gaming shoots there, we're like, hey, door's broken. We're not weird people. Just go to the bathroom. We're not going to open the door on you. Just make sure you hit that the record button when you walk in. Yeah, yeah. So that, you know. Yeah. Um, just don't turn off all the lights so you see the people. Um, no, no. But but we, So we gave that same speech to um, Angie WK, who's allergic to cats, by the way. So he hung out outside Aaron's apartment. They both shared. They had this really tender moment where Aaron and Angie WK both had allergy pills together which is adorable but anyways like we told we, we told we, we told him about the the Bro bath the broken bathroom door and he's like oh okay and he walks and he closes it closes it like it isn't a big deal it, it just closes completely and we're like so wait does he have mystical properties or, <laughs> because like the entire time that he was there the bathroom door worked and as soon as he left, it broke again. And to this day, we can't. What did you do, it. Andrew WK? We demand to know. <laughs> so yeah, he can party all he wants, and he he can like he ate the second hottest pepper we had, and just like stared at the camera and um, thanked us for the adrenaline rush, and didn't drink any milk, and and leave. But at the end of the day, like the thing that I can't wrap my head around is that bathroom door. <laughs> Wait, let me ask you this all important question: How yeah. hard did his nipples get when um, he did it? I wasn't. I actually. There was no notable, no, noticeable okay. nipple movement because I feel like to this uh, day I feel like an iteration <laughs> to your show um, that you need to do. Pop up nipple point. close up. Well, no, not even that. It's just having an outside person like myself or like Kevin come in and then test the physicality of the person and rate that physicality on a scale. For instance, oh, totally. like the sweat scale, Greg would have done ten mm -hmm. out of ten. 
uh, the shit drooling out of my mouth scale yeah. again nailed it. <laughs> Thank you. And then the all important nipple and erection uh, test mm-hmm. just to see nine eleven. <laughs> so, uh, the table's <laughs> tipping over. <laughs> well, no, when uh, when Rami, when, okay, when Rami, another crazy night. When Rami Ismail, Anthony Carboni, and Shuhei Yoshida for some reason came on. <laughs> Shuhei, Sh- I think Shuhei and Rami were both wearing Fitbits, so they could like map their heart rate over time. And it, that that was a trip to see. But that was, I mean, have I told you guys that story? No, yeah. what was okay. shoes? Was it, did it just go off the charts? Yeah, it, 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 he just like interrupts. He just comes yeah. in and sits down. Yeah, no, it, it's ins- okay. So like, it was it was E three, and I I was like super sick during E three, but I was like trying to like trudge Soldier through. On. Yeah, yeah. So like, Rami Rami hits me up. He's like, "Hey, I want to do a hot pepper gaming interview, and I want to do it with Anthony Carboni." And I was like, "That sounds like a lot of work, but okay, let's do it. Like, like this will be cool. I think so." Um, I'm taking a nap until literally an hour before they come, and then like I have to set everything up in my tiny apartment that that we shoot Hot Pepper Gaming in now. And then Rami Ismail shows up, um, uh, and he had just gotten back from dinner with a couple friends, and he introduces me to them, and like he introduces uh, who I now know is Shuhei Yoshida, but I was looking at him and I did that thing where I was just like squinty eyed at him, and was like, I know yeah, you. I, yeah. But yeah, so so like I like we we all walk into my apartment and I quickly pull up my Twitter and I was like, oh my gosh, what's going on? So. Um, <laughs> And then he helps me move my couch, and like to this day, I'm like, so like, yeah, like I'm not trying to ch- pick a side in like the console wars right now, but one of the sides so helped Spencer's me move my never couch. Come and move furniture with you, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so look, like Major Nelson, if you want to, if you want to come over, <laughs> help me rearrange some furniture. I'm sure we can figure out a way to like. Maybe you can fix your bathroom door. Like, yeah, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we get it, we get in there, and you know, like we start going into the interview, and then like. Uh, she was eating this up. He thinks it's like the coolest thing in the world. And we we're like, well, do you want to do you want to go on it? And he's like, yeah, dude, totally. So uh, we get into a little bit. And Direct in, quote from Shuhei Yoshida. Yeah, was, dude, totally. He was he, <laughs> pretty much, man. So like they, they got to the part where they, they mentioned PS4 and like Shuhei Yoshida comes in. He sits down between them. He's a hot pepper. And like all you can get out is like PS4. Yes, very excited. <laughs> Nuclear <laughs> throne. <laughs> Um, and then, oh God, and then, and then we, we, we all got Denny's afterward. Like we, we, we went and got milkshakes and I was sitting in, in, in again, it's one of those things like, I, I'm just like a fan of video games. Like I'm like, I, I'm, I really love video games so much. And here I am in a Denny's with Shuhei Yoshida and a bunch of like cool indie developers. And Anthony Carboni's there too. And it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> how is this life? <laughs> and, and I was like, I'm sitting next to Shuhei Yoshida. And like, this was um, E3 when they announced um, Last Guardian. And I'm a, like, I'm a huge Shadow of the Claws fan. So I showed, uh, I showed ah. Shuhei my Shadow of the Claws tattoo. And he got super excited, and he like tweeted, and he's like, "Look at Vernon, he's so happy." And it's like it was really one of those like, "Oh God, what have I done?" kind of moments. <laughs> so, do you ever get the feeling that Shuhei is like a god, and he's just using us for in, like enjoyment or entertainment? Like we're his pawns, and he's just like, "I'm gonna push Greg over here right now." <laughs> Look at him; he went. <laughs> he's, he's he's too benevolent for that. That's not the kind of god he's he such, is. No, he's such a kind. He is a god for sure. He is a god. He yeah, and when the play. show came out, like he he changed his whole like Twitter to be about habanero peppers, and it was just like it was the cutest thing in the world. And it was one <laughs> of those like it was one of those really like really gratifying moments of like awesome. yeah, it was like really you know like me and everyone else who works on Happy Every Gaming, we were working on we were so hard on this, and like people are in a sense recognizing that, and like what whatever it is in the future or whatever I go on to do with or after during Hop Ever Gaming, like this is something to really appreciate that I got to do something. That made me feel like I belonged with other creators. That's so, wh- awesome. where are you on that journey now? You 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 you've left your job. Mm-hmm. You're gonna go into this YouTube thing full time ideas. on your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. is yeah. Hot Pepper Gaming still a, like a a, key, a you know a major part of what? Oh you yeah, are totally. You are? Yeah, it's um um I, I'm I'm playing a little close to the vest right now. Unfortunately, it mo- it's mostly a paranoia thing. Um, but yeah, like, like it, it, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's my idea. Until that, you like, sign the contract with us, you don't <laughs> yeah. want to say it. I understand. Yeah. Hey, I'm kind of funny, Vernon. <laughs> <laughs> New Colin. <laughs> yeah. Ask Kevin how 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 quickly those contracts come. <laughs> Still waiting, Kevin. It's been a year. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's We're good it's, for it. It's in the it's in the mail, Kevin. It's in the mail. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of red tape here. Yeah, uh, the HR department's <laughs> looking yeah. it over. So, like, I I don't know. I keep talking about my obsession with like creating things for the internet, and like, I feel like oh, over my ten year like creating things online, like I've developed like this tinfoil hat theory about shareable content. Like, I think that there's there's really a way to do it and figure it out to build. 
cool things. Like, uh, uh, here we go. Like, um, I think that there's like three things you have to do to create something successful Ooh, online. Damn. Like, if, if, if list video. Yeah, like, I am so into this. Yeah, like, okay, so okay, so it's the idea of like, okay, so so to start off, like, you you have this idea called the compressible idea. Okay, so and and you 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 guys will pick up on this super super easily. It's they used to say that like to have something that succeeds like as a story or whatever it needed to be a simple idea or a high concept. And I don't necessarily agree with that. I think that it's an idea that can be compressed. So like something that can get as small as a uh, as a YouTube title, but when you click into it, it like becomes something bigger. So take something like Epigraph Battles of History, right? When you boil it down to its, its most basic state, it's just um, it's just two historical figures rat battling. And you're like, well, I know what a like I, I know what like Michelangelo versus like the Ninja Turtles is. I know those things. I'm gonna click into it. And then you click into it and it expands, right? It becomes something bigger than just the title. So it's like it's you know, it's well written, it's funny, it stars YouTubers you know and like, it has a cool beat. So there's all these things. And like hot pepper gaming more or less does that. Mm-hmm. Like you you break it down, it's like people trying to review video games directly after eating hot peppers. Um so my argument is like the more you can compress something, the further it will travel online. Very um, interesting. Yeah, and, and I, I I heard that in like uh it, just take uh, it. It's like your the, idea. You made yeah, it up. <laughs> the, the, the weirdest. It was like a it was a YouTube video explaining Phil Fish. Oh, for some reason. Um, we know him. But but yeah, it was like it was one of those things. Like the more the easier something is to explain to someone, the the more likely they are to click on it. So the three things they're fighting for: are getting someone to click on something, getting some someone to watch all the way through it, and getting someone to share it with other people. So. Uh, you know, like there, there, there's been a big thing about like the the YouTube algorithm, like what's gonna page rank on YouTube, and and I don't necessarily think that's a safe thing to to like bank off of because Once it doesn't it always changes, be you're like fucked. That. Yeah, like at the beginning of 2012, it stopped being about like how many views something got. It became about how long something watched it for, mm-hmm. and like right Watch now, time. like like a a a two minute video that someone watches 100 percent of isn't going to rank as high as a 20 minute video that someone watches half of. Right, just because someone's on YouTube for longer, and that's more valuable. Like, if someone's on YouTube longer, they're gonna like YouTube's able to serve them more ads, and then you know, like m- people make more money. So they're they're of course gonna value that. But aside from all of that, like if you can great, create something that someone wants to share with someone else, then you're you exist outside of any algorithm, and you can be on whatever platform you want mm-hmm. based on what you create. So it's it's this argument that like okay, and the. And, and and it started getting more like tinfoil hat for me. Like I I started like thinking about it. It's like yeah, this kind of like applies to everything else, right? Like music, movies, and TV. Like if you can explain something to someone really easily, like like when you see Jurassic when you say Jurassic Park, you got a you got an image in your head, right? And then you you can point to Jaws and be like, yo, that too. It's like this this old blockbuster model. Like if you can explain it to someone and it's something that you can condense, like when you want to share it with someone else, you still have that ammunition. So mm-hmm. if someone watches Hot Pepper Gaming and so, and it's like, oh man people eat hot peppers and try to review video games, they can say that exact thing to a friend Mm. and they can understand that as well. So like when you have the compressible idea that someone watches all the way through, then the person who's sharing it, like your biggest, like your, your, your community, the people who want to make you get big, they're able to make you get big just because they can explain it. Right. Well, I mean, it's, it's similar to sort of like uh, the movie poster mentality, right? Where you've got an image and a tagline and that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that does make that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, think of how iconic Back to the Future is. Like when I say Back to the Future, you see Marty McFly in front of a DeLorean mm-hmm. with a with his watch up, and he's like, "Yo, what time is it? I right. don't know." <laughs> Game time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> then the basketball comes in and Air Bud rides away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, like big Back to the like, Future. Uh, like a big realization for me was realizing that, like, oh my god, that's my Tinder profile. Like, like uh, what, what, seriously, like what you're trying to do with a with a Tinder profile is you're supposed to like have someone see your picture understand what's about you click in read mm-hmm. everything so like they're intrigued they find out more and then you kind of affect them to the point where they like do something about it they like they swipe right on you and that's like the same for music movies and televisions like you get someone into the door like you get someone into your shop you have them you like show them something and then they're like that's cool I'm, i want more people to see this so they they like a long time ago they it wasn't even a long time ago this was like 2011 they they um, the UCLA did a study on like what goes through someone's brain when they wanted to share something, right? They like what they stuck people in an MRI machine. The, they showed them, I forgot the method, but they showed them something. They're like, hey, you want to share this with someone? And if they were like, yeah, like they would measure what part of their brain. Anything uh, to get out of this too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very uncomfortable. I can't move my head. <laughs> but uh, it's uh, it's something called like, uh, I think the tempo parietal junction, which um, when we were cavemen, apparently it was the same part of your brain that fired when you brought like a woolly mammoth back to camp. It was like, 
it was like when you're providing good for your community. Yeah, yeah. Like you would feel good about it. So yeah. like when you're a Pokemon fan and you see Pikachu on acid and you're like, and you're like, hey, like people I know in my community would laugh at this. They would have yeah. a good time watching this. Like you get that sense of validation when you share it to them. So. Well, a big piece of the, the share theory and all that stuff mm. is that it's when you share something with someone, it's almost less about sharing it with them and more about wanting to tell people who you are. Mm-hmm. So you sharing that shows that you like Pokemon. Exactly. And that you yeah. know Pokemon and that mm-hmm. you have the up on someone else that likes Pokemon because mm-hmm. they're going to like this thing that you already like. Yeah. So you're, you're sort of a content curator or a, a connoisseur and that's like that's what a lot of like the internet economy is built off of like showing someone something that they'll like. Yeah. So like that's that's really what I want to explore and all the other stuff that I do. Like I, I want to like you know, like it, maybe it's not just YouTube. Maybe there's other things. Like maybe you're going. Well, your Twitter is amazing, by the way. Oh, thank That's you. Very much. Like we talk often about Taco Bell's Twitter, like the mm-hmm. social media presence being oh, awesome. The Hot Pepper Gaming Twitter. The Hot Pepper Gaming Twitter. I mean, your, your normal Twitter is fine, thank but you. Yeah. but uh, no, your, uh, the it's Hot fine. Pepper Gaming Twitter is great. Like, oh, it's, thank you so much. You know what you're doing. You have a character. You know what yeah, I mean. Yeah. And I think that helps a lot too. Where yeah, it's, and it's I've, funny. Been, I've been getting really mad recently because like there's a lot of other like like companies with money that are doing like because uh, like I tweet as a sentient pepper and like but, like my main shtick is like just taking. Taking like song lyrics and making them about hot peppers. It's great. I I love it. It's like one of my favorite things I get to work on. But um, a lot of and I don't want to call it Tatinas right now because I love Tatinas. But like they're now they're tweet they're tweeting as a sentient uh, Totino pizza roll. Those sons of bitches. I know. Fucking and, and shots like, fired, man. Yeah. Shots no. fired. Like yo, if you want to get together and and I don't know, like come out with something spicy, we'll we'll figure it out. Like I like you. I'm sure you're a great guy. But like it, it's kind of cool to because like when you're okay. When you're on Twitter, like you're, you're did you just you're, pitch Totino's yeah, on yeah, a collaboration. Yo, hey, yeah. <laughs> no, guys, catch that. We got this close to locking down something with Tums once, just based oh, on, on the fact that we were like tweeting at them incessantly. Like, I, I got to have a phone call with like the milk PR team, and nothing, <laughs> uh, yeah, and nothing worked out. But it was like, yeah, dude, I am a piece of shit on Twitter, aren't I? Uh, <laughs> Damn, they use, dude. you wear people down and then annoy <laughs> yeah. them. Like, fine, get them on the phone. But yeah, seriously. Um, but um, God, where where was I? It was like it, it's just like because when you're on Twitter as like us, like you're you're tweeting about the things that you like, you know, like and you know I feel like I'm a lot more than just video games. Like I like bicycling, I like movies, I got a weird record collection at my place. I'm I'm a hipster. Like let's be honest, let's call it what it is. You're wearing a flower hat right Thank now. Thank you. I I bought it's this, amazing. I bought the, I'm half Filipino. I bought this in the Philippines, and I had to explain to my Filipino mother that it was okay for guys to wear floral prints now. So I bet I'm good. I'm, and I don't know your mother, but if she's from my mom's generation, which which I think age wise probably is, mm. guarantee she didn't take that nope. explanation at all. No, nope. she's like, nope, don't believe you. I nope. know you're hip. I know you're cool. I know you're. I know you're hip. That I but know she, you're. I know you're on a she, fixed she, bicycle, I, but I, this is too fucking far rooted. No, for Christmas she bought me a shirt with flowers on it. It's like, Aww. is this like a weird apology? Mom? <laughs> like, apology? You're like, mom, that's actually a blouse. That is a female <laughs> blouse that you bought from Macy's. <laughs> um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, okay, so. Um, so You're like you, Vernon. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm Vernon. When, when, like, at Vernon Shaw is just Vernon. And, you know, like, it has a lot less Twitter followers than Hop Ever Gaming because it's not a singularized focus. Like, sure. uh, when people started doing uh, YouTube stuff, like, YouTube, like, Google gave a bunch of people a bunch of money to, like, make YouTube channels for, like, quote unquote premium content. Right? I remember. Yeah. Yeah, so like a, that. a, a lot of people we're here. did that, and and not a lot of not a lot of people succeeded on that. No, side note: I like yeah, how no, you fucking right. gave him the pound. <laughs> yeah, and start, he was the person. We made that every start single the person that had the good ideas. For I the every, 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 right single, every single time we did anything, I start. It was you and me, and Tim was like, "I don't want to touch that. That is that's a terrible idea. Very true. I don't want anything to do with this stupid show that you guys are doing. You any guys successful are, thing on start, I had something to do with it. It's true. Everything that didn't succeed, I was like, I'm glad I opened up like an old wound. But yeah, well, what so, did you do once? No, <laughs> so so a, a, a lot of those How failed specifically because people were programming YouTube channels like cable television. They were like, "All right, so like uh, Monday we have this show, and like we have a bunch of like licensed content. Yeah, like here's like strawberry talk show, yeah. and then a fucking <laughs> shopping oh, show. Stop, and it, stop then... that! Stop that right now! I know where you're going with that. <laughs> no, but uh, that's true though. That's and that was some of that. That I think on on my part at least, and on the part of our executives was was I think a big a glaring miscommunication between what the initiative meant to be and what it ended up being Mm -hmm. and i think a lot of people if you don't recall this era um a lot of the content creators that got their hand on that money uh ijen especially was like we're going to go after a more of a tv model with this because let's be honest like for the longest time and still that we were talking about earlier like people that are on the internet 
whether they say so or not, want to be on TV because yeah. that's where the fame yeah. and the money is, right? And so I think for the long for for whereas we're all here, like we're very, I assume we're very happily internet trash monsters, right? Definitely. Well, yeah, I all I want is goals. Lego Avengers to show up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care about TV. <laughs> um, but I feel like. I mean, yes and no. Like, I mean, if, on, you know, yeah. we, we're, if we're all being honest, if any one of us got offered a TV deal right now, we would be super yeah, excited no, about that's that. That's a different thing, I think. Yeah. But I think, no, I think there is more of a, I think we're a lot more comfortable in our skin now being an internet. And I think yeah. that it's more legitimized than ever now. And you can actually make a living on it. So yeah, totally. I think once all those things kind of came it's, it's to not, fruition, We're not the weirdos in the room. Well, we're kind of the weirdos. We're the, the, weird, we're the cool weirdos. We're the cool yeah. ass weirdos. Kevin's the non cool weirdo. Kevin's that's cool. cool. Yeah. He's not that weird though. So he needs to step his fucking weirdo up. Yeah, dude. Kevin's the man Felicia Day called disgusting. Not that weird. <laughs> yeah. That should be your just claim to fame. <laughs> should we put that on a plaque? <laughs> I think it's on his right. We, gotta, we gotta hang our YouTube I, buttons. We can hang I, just I don't, I don't know the story and I don't want to know it. I just you want to know that don't. specific It's part. not nearly as bad as it sounds. Kevin just used to force his girlfriend to lick his tongue. Suck his tongue. I Suck his tongue. He asked pub, in public was multiple times. <laughs> I don't know if it's so much ass as much as it was just like lick my tongue. And she She was into it. Not the she first time you said. She's no. She was never into it. You're right. I yeah, never. <laughs> uh but getting back on track, like the like the the tongues. The 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 cable model just doesn't really work on online because uh the internet is like a, an on demand service. Yeah. Like you mm. see whatever you want when you want to see mm -hmm. it and you go to specific YouTube channels because you want to see it. Yeah, you know what thing. did work? Source fed. Yeah. Because that made sense. And that's still a thing. Mm -hmm. You know, Wait. all the other YouTube channels that were in that program aren't a thing anymore. Geek and Sundry. Yeah. Okay, and Geek and Sundry. Yeah. yeah. Maker Studios was one of them, too. Who? Maker Studios. That oh, Maker. That yeah, yeah. Wait, what? Yeah. I don't know. The Maker was... had one. What was Maker's? I can't remember. Whatever happened to that I one? I want to say not. Oh, they, they had a music thing for a while, and they, they did some other things. Which but... one was Nacho Punch? The I worked on Nacho, Nacho Punch. Punch. Did you work on Nacho Punch? Yeah, no. Like, some of my favorite things I got to do were on Nacho Punch. I mean, Punch. Nacho like, Punch. Like, let's great be name. Oh, and it was great a great name. channel. Was, it was hit or miss, but when it fucking hit, ooh. yeah, yeah, like, that's uh, comedy. Because like I, I was uh, like uh, me and me and Aaron, like the, like the two of the three people on Hot Pepper Gaming, like we sort of led creative development for Notch Bunch, and we were like, hey, look, like this is the like this is us putting our ideas into practice of like, okay, so you have evergreen content and you have like shareable stuff and you have repeatable content. So like we we uh, one of the my favorite things we got to work on was like what if this uh, director directed porn. So we got to do like, what if Wes Anderson directed a porn? And like, we we released that, um, like the same week Disney announced that they bought us, and we were like, do you do you know what you're buying? <laughs> like, <laughs> so things getting real weird. But like, my favorite thing that I got work to work on that was like Cosmos on weed, which oh, is Jesus. Cosmos. Yeah, we yeah. Got, <laughs> no, we we got we got Eric Griffin from Workaholics to like to portray Neil deGrasse Tyson. We just made we just made like some of the best weed jokes. I've ever like I've ever gotten the pleasure to work on another and another career highlight for you. <laughs> Thank I you. I love everything Thank about you. this conversation. <laughs> yeah, no, it, it's um, but yeah. So like you, you, you. Get, what I'm trying to say is, is I'm taking it very roundabout ways. Like you go to online to see something that you want to see, and um, if you're a YouTube channel that gives them gives people exactly what they want to see, like people go to your your channel because they want to see you guys. They like mm -hmm. you guys' personality, and like they you're, you're y'all y'all are fun. Share Patreon. this. Um, and like people go to hot pepper gaming because like the, it's like we're exactly what we say we are people try to review video games after eating hot peppers mm -hmm. and like if you if you go into things making that even if it's just a Twitter like if you singularize your focus like that you're gonna see success so that's a hot YouTube tip for you there you go how was that <laughs> is it Portillo or is it Colin the party's locked up Kevin it sounded like it could have been gunshots so be careful or someone unboxing something there's no one out there Colin's out Colin. there. No I'm one's out there. Me. It's just a ghost. No, that's Colin. He's, out there. He's, He's sick. He's a sick young man. He should be God, in bed. God bless Colin. He came out and he was like, ah, I just don't feel right. <laughs> now, I love Dude. I love the way Colin puts things. Not, I don't feel good. I don't feel well. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel right. Well, I appreciate when he was he was trying to give it the college drive. Like, well, do you are you do you want me on the show? I'm like, no, don't worry. But he's like, I, I feel like I'm not pulling. I'm like, no, why? And he's like, I, I'll come. Don't come on the show. And then he wouldn't shake your hand because he was sick. I'm like, why well, do he wants to be locked in a room with you for two hours? I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm appreciative of that, but yeah, maybe hot pepper game is not for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Vernon Shaw, hey, how do you want to put a bow on your topic of who you are? Um. Follow you on Twitter. Go to Hot Pepper Gaming. Yeah, yeah. I'm on Twitter at Hot Pepper Gaming and and at Vernon Shaw. I'm, I'm always working on stuff. Like my, I don't know, man. I kind of realized a bit ago that like uh, I will be a happy person if for the rest of my life I just get to make dumb stuff and make people laugh. 
So that's what I'm trying to do. And if you want to follow me along for the ride, those are the ways to do it. When are you going to announce where you're going and what you're doing? I don't know yet. I don't know that's yet. That's scary. But um, Will people here like it? I hope so. Okay. Will but Kevin like it? Kevin doesn't like anything. Kevin will like it. Me and Good. Kevin like have built a like copacetic relationship. It happens. Right, like yeah. Kevin yeah. Let me, that's that's how he gets yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Kevin let, let me into the in. apartment. He offered me a napkin. Things are going great. Kevin's like one of those super nice friends that like just wants to sleep on your couch for a week, and then a year <laughs> later you're like, you gotta go. <laughs> He's all smiles, but he did say you came up the stairs slowly. Okay. Just really? You know. Right. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> that's not gonna I, play I, me. I, I, I didn't <laughs> hustle enough, Kevin. Oh, I was just confused. Like I went up too fast. I can admit the, that. The, no, the context of this was up. he was saying he realized he went too fast when he looked back and saw that you were going slow. He's like, that was weird that I just I'm ran away from I'm on vacation him. right now. Yeah. I'm I'm here to I mosey. Am, I am I'm, like. I just want you to know when all of you out there are like, oh, you guys give Kevin too much shit. This is what we deal with. Those are the thoughts that go through <laughs> Kevin's head. Did I go up the stairs too fast? What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> I mean, I ran up the stairs, and I was like, oh, fuck, I'm not the only person here. Like, wait, well, where else would I have gone? <laughs> Topic <laughs> number three <laughs> comes from the communities. Hmm. Over at kindoffunny.com slash forums, there is a thread on the Game Over Reggae Show thing of suggested hmm. topics. Hmm. I decided to grab one at random. Whoa. And I, gra- I grabbed one from Jan Hell Yeah. Jan Hell Yeah. Jan Hell Yeah says, do you consider masturbation a sin? I remember, That's heavy. Awesome All right, let's go ahead and do it. I remember back when I was in the ninth grade, my religious teacher, yeah, religious teacher, told us that it is actually considered as one. I never really mm. believed her. As a matter of fact, I recall joking around my friends about it. I told them that if masturbation is indeed a sin, then they can call me the devil. Oh, damn. God. Jan, hell yeah. He's jerking it left and right. First of all, I'm going to preface this by saying I was I was raised in a very conservative Catholic household. And mm. Mom, if you're watching, I'm so sorry. No, Mom, if you're watching right now, turn it off because Nick's about Why, to light some shit up. <laughs> you want oh to God. dominate this one? So I like how Jan, whether it be a girl or a guy, yeah. didn't believe it. Didn't believe it was the and I, a religious teacher, I guess, makes more sense. Well, mm-hmm. I originally read it as religion teacher, you know what I mean? At which point you would hear all about the seed being spilled on the belly being wrong in the Bible, of course, <laughs> right, yeah. as we know it well. I like yeah, seed I was, being I like spilled seed, on the belly, spilling yeah, that yeah, that's, 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 on the belly. That's, that's a thing. Yeah, that's a I, real I'll dig it up thing. for you. I'll dig it up for you because that is quite the visual. Yeah, like, hey, that man, is very graphic. When God wrote the Bible. Through people, he was he was he was giving you the nickel words, not the penny words. I mean, don't I, worry about I'm it. just gonna say that I have I've touched thousand. myself many times, and I don't think I've ever gotten seed on my belly. You're doing it wrong. No, I whoa, think it's whoa. Actually, like, yeah. Really? <laughs> so wait, mean? but yeah. you, you how are you, you jacking off? That's what the belly button's for. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, how am I sitting down? What, you don't hang upside down on like pull up bars and. Take care of you you of, you, like, <laughs> now here's how you do it. You wait till your wife goes to bed. You wait at least 30 minutes to make sure she's actually conked out. And then you're on your couch and you slink down a little bit. That's when you start getting the seat on the belly. Yeah. Ah, oh, no, man. What I've do you, what do, you do, like so... over a toilet where you're just like, I don't know. No, I'm, I'm sitting down usually in front of a computer. Do you, sp- do you, do you, uh, that's, that's, I, that's, I, that's, jam it out that's onto the, the rich ground? man's I'll masturbation. Have, <laughs> 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 I'll have like, like a, a tissue or something to, to catch said seed. <laughs> Well, maybe maybe what the Bible was referring to was if there's another person there that has a belly in front of you and you're just like trying to spray on that bad. I don't think target practice. Yeah, yeah. You I know, don't like know. you like sometimes when you want to like make things fun, you pull out and just like let it go wherever it's gonna go. You see, if someone else is there, I don't count it as masturbation. It's not, but you can't masturbate with someone else. There is the such a thing as mutual masturbation. But that's different. That's when you get really lazy. Also, that's sick. like year three also in show. The show is mutual <laughs> masturbation. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Jan, what is it? 69, Jan, 69? hell yeah. Jan, hell yeah. Um, I'm going to go out of limb and say yes. Masturbation is a sin. That's what makes it fun. <laughs> no, it's See, not a sin. It's not a sin. I don't care who you are. I'm adding in the belly, apparently. It's about spilling your seed. Yeah, I don't remember there being a belly. Just anywhere. Just spilling seed. I, again, I'm just telling you how I jack off. <laughs> well, you know. I like to lay down, recline. Do what I gotta do. Laying down? Yeah. I've never done that. Oh, do yeah. it tonight. You're gonna oh, love yeah. it. You're gonna love it. I mean, I've never finished laying down. There's been times it's started. Kevin, laying turn down. off the cameras. We gotta experience this. <laughs> <laughs> Move off the table. I'll show you. Keep, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. <laughs> yeah, keep it rolling. That's the one for the patrons. <laughs> but uh, not. <laughs> you get it. You yeah. get the model. <laughs> There's been times where I've been. I've been. Hey, Colin. You've never. Loved <laughs> you gotta be loud. Come here and talk into the microphone. No, it's okay. no, he's gonna get it sick. You've never, you masturbate, but never Louder. laying down. Ejaculated laying down before. Constant. You yeah, masturbated, no. but you've never ejaculated laying down. 
before. That's what comes it's a weird if I'm kid, masturbating, right? I'm like, I'm sitting down. I know I'm ready for it's a thing. It's a it's a okay. You're like the kid who went to like Ivy League school. <laughs> no, it's just <laughs> no, we come up from the street. He no, <laughs> no, 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 no. This, is the, this is the honest to God's truth. He is like you were talking about the internet generation. <laughs> yeah, he's got to be jacked. You never the had to lay down and use your imagination <laughs> about true. an ass shaking in your face it's so true. fat you want to take a bite out of it. <laughs> Jesus, clap, make it clap, Greg. I get what you're saying, and like I feel like whenever there is that imagination spark. That then leads to the computer. Oh, see, you're so broken. Start you're broken down, inside. Get up. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, you should try to. You should how do give you it read a shot. Porn? Oh, Nobody reads. How do you? How do you read your so literatica? Like I did. Did. the only time it's acceptable a, to read porn is if you're on a crowded airplane and you're flying coach. If you're in first class, well, you better then, be watching then, porn then you, and jacking it off. Then you pull up fanfiction.net slash Snape x My Comical Romance frontman Gerard Way. And you read that out. What the fuck did you just <laughs> say to me? I, I, I made a fan fiction joke. Stick Holy shit. Internet. Who the fuck? What was the second part? So Snape, Snape Harry Potter. Yeah. My Chemical Romance from Android Way. Oh, My Chemical Romances. Uh, you yeah. said that real quick. See, we're not familiar with this My Chemical right, Romance. Yeah, just, That's just, not in our vernacular. You, ever, you guys ever read the fan fiction? No. It's a, it's, oh, there's, there's it's kind of funny it. fan fiction out there. Oh, I and it's fan fiction. fucking weird in the best way. Oh, I gotta start yeah, jacking off. Send, send more of those. It no, write dirty. me into it. Thank oh, you. Oh, please do. Some hot peppers. Then Vernon came with a burlap sack of habaneros. And he taught Tim how to lay down. Get on the table, Tim. Him. No, I do lay, but... So no, I don't think masturbation's a sin. I do. I understand. I, having religious teachers for thirteen grades in a row, they they teach you it's a sin. But this is the whole thing with the Bible. I mean, Anything damn. adults don't want you to do, they teach you is a sin. Murder. Right. That's insane. Masturbation. Cheating on wives. Well, but I mean, I and this is this is where I think. I mean, I don't have a steep knowledge of the Bible, so I don't want to misspeak. But this is where I, I would wish Colin would be here for this. Was because I mean, like, wasn't that at a time when the that. They needed people to actually reproduce, and the idea of uh, you masturbating and not actually having a child come out of that was was da- you know potentially dangerous or hazardous for the populace, like the general populace. That's a rage. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but no, but like, like, the God, idea of masturbating for to it ever. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying that, that is something I've heard before. Right? Like where like with the it's it's a pretty not I don't know how well supported it is, but the idea that. The Catholic Church uses the Bible as a control mechanism, and one of those control mechanisms is having a lot of children so that you have to actually go to church. Like, you have to rely on the church for support. That builds into the notion of of sort of the, the cult of the organized religion. That's not that's, that's, code that's, shit. <laughs> I mean, it's not, it's not necessarily like, why, why else would masturbation be bad? Like, I, I would just be putting together, like, the, the, the cryptogram, and, like, I'd finally get all the words in place and just, like... Don't come, it's sin. Don't come. <laughs> no, but right, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> but I, I, I can't remember the book I'm reading, and I'm probably going to misquote it, but it, it might have been Guns, Germs, and Steel, but they talk... Oh, maybe it wasn't that. They talk about the like the Hindu religion, right? right. Why why it's uh, the cow is sacred, and there was and a lot of people think that it's because back when that when those laws were actually being written as as sort of a religious law, it was because there was uh, cows. Uh, there was like a not not a um, pig uh, swine flu, but something going on with meat that made people you know when you That's eat a cow yeah. you would die. And so they were like, well, we need to get this, d- disseminate this information to the general public. And the only way to do that really is through the loudspeaker of religion. Scare tactics. Right. Well, yeah. it's the scare tactic, but it's it's the same reason why we have laws today, right? Where it's like, yeah. you know, I don't want to get too philosophical, but like a lot of people don't break the law because there's fear of repercussion, not mm-hmm. because they're good people. Right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people don't like I speed sometimes when I th- when I think I can get away with it and when I think I'm not going to hurt someone. But when I get a ticket, what? Nothing. Kevin, what are you checking your head for? Oh, but you know what I mean? So so there is that notion of like a lot of these old school things that are quote unquote sins are control mechanisms for the general populace and they are no longer necessary ne- necessarily need to be perceived as that. I can see, like, see, what shocks me about that, though, is, you know, back then, I assume that it was a lot of the men that were kind of making the rules. You know, things have changed over time a bit. But back then. It was a male dominated society for sure. Still a male dominated society. No, no, no. I know. But I'm saying even more back then. Yeah. And I, I just can't wrap my head around a guy thinking he's gonna run out of jizz like i don't think no it's it's not about that it's about it's the same reason why it's it, you know i think it's i think it's the i think it's the catholic religion where it's it, it's it's considered against god's uh law to actually use pro, like condoms yeah like uh birth control mm-hmm. and so that's the idea of you know when you start unpacking that it's because they you know the idea of having a child and and, and the child being born is a, is it has the religious undertone of like you know that's a new life that's being created and God is in all life and so when you're spilling your seed you are your basically wasting 
you know, what could be a new okay, life form. Okay, so it's wasting potential. But in reality, what, what some people, and I'm not saying this is, the, this is the actual reason why it was, but what some people would argue is that that is yet another control mechanism of, you know, keeping people kind of reliant on the church. Of like, oh shit, I can't masturbate, so I have to have sex, and there's no, and I can't use condoms. So guess what's going to result from that? More likely than not, is another Famous. child that I can't support. So what organization will help me support this? The Catholic Church. Many many people online, and these are like Christianity Today and all these different things, are calling out that masturbation not a sin, not specifically mentioned. Interpretations of the seed on the ground is where this all stems from. But the kicker is that we're specifically told not to lust after women or other people. So masturbation, how do you masturbate without lust? 30 minutes ago, and I was talking many... about someone's nice collarbones. No, but there is... Like, I'm, I'm, I'm way that's past That's admiring that. yeah. fine art. <laughs> but that's just that's actually written into the Ten Commandments, though. Yeah. Like, you can't right. cover well, that neighbor's I'm, wife. I'm just spelling it out, because this is one of those things where we always come at these conversations, and we talk, Colin and I will talk about, like, we went to parochial school and did this, and mm. we're raising the kids, and then we kind of left it behind, and, you know, it's not dusty. But like then people oh, who are still yeah. like devout Catholics yeah. will be in the comments never, saying this isn't how it's supposed dude, to be. Dude, I never even studied. Even I mean, though when I, I know was going to Catholic I remember school, class I not being told. Like, yeah, masturbation I, wasn't a cool thing. I have never cool. been to Catholic school. That was totally not my thing. And the mm. idea of a teacher telling me that I can't masturbate is ridiculous. Don't even bring it up. It's escalating a bit there, but yeah. No, but, but I mean, even, like you said that not like, like math class is telling you don't masturbate. Well, whatever. Yeah. You're like religious teacher <laughs> yeah. or whatever it was. Like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. To me, like grow. I grew up again, San Francisco public schools and stuff. You jack off in the street. I mean, it's just fucking sexual freedom. Like, like do whatever the fuck you want as long as it's consensual. Streets, yeah. So yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, you know, I I grew up with that, and I grew up with the idea that like, you know, you sort of had to be ashamed of all of those urges because it was against God's will. So yeah. I have I have sort of a very harsh uh, perspective on that. You know, where I don't necessarily believe that it's right or okay for an organization to impose those rules um, on people who. Uh, frankly, are uh, more often than not uh, in need of something like that, in need of, of of another group out there that will help them, and it's almost predatory. Um, I, you know, all religion to a certain degree started off with sort of a cult mentality in in mind, right? Where there's, you know, you have a, a, like religious symbols and and, and religious like um, uh, rhetoric and a lot of religious sort of. Uh, um, you know, uh, ritual that you, you know, ritualistic activities that you do. And we have that too, by the way, I'm not saying that's a bad thing necessarily, but that's, that's how you indoctrinate people into like, into your messaging is to have those sort of, sort of, uh, sort of things. And so, you know, the, the Catholic church is, is no exception that that started off as a, as a much in the same way that something like a Scientology would have started off. And it's fascinating to look at like from an outsider's perspective, I mean, everything's relative, but you look at Scientology and you go, that's crazy. But, but why is the saying Cath- that aliens came here and did all this other stuff, just, but God, Right, impregnating just a woman as, yeah, just out of the blue, exactly. no big deal. And then you know, never. And it's cool in the DC universe. Back. So, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. I mean, here's, I, a good, here's a good paragraph from Christian Apologetics and Research Ministry, written by Matt Slick. And this is just what you find when you go down. We can say this for sure: if masturbation involves sexual fantasies and/or pornography, then it is certainly not pure and is very sinful. The Bible Bible clearly teaches that our minds are important to God. Our, I'm sorry, our minds are as important important to God as our bodies, and that we are to remain pure in both. Jesus said, quote, You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks on a woman to lust for her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. That's Jesus is saying that thinking lustful thoughts is sinful. Therefore, masturbation involving sexual fantasies, at least not of one's spouse, is undoubtedly sinful. Okay, so wait for it. So um, if, if, that, if that were true, and you could only ma- masturbate to like thoughts of baseball... Wouldn't that just give you a really weird baseball fetish? You should or probably just fall in love. You should just fall in love. Some people love big black baseball bats. It's true. <laughs> they just love That's that. Very true. Um, yeah, but I mean, that, I mean, you see, you see that mentality right yeah. there, right? Is that you're buying into something that takes a, it's a bit, a little bit of far fetch. I know I'm preaching to the choir with you guys. Like, I don't think you guys are clamoring to get back to your Sunday school anytime soon. But my confirmation that, name is Patrick. Is it? So you, know. you, you actually confirmed Timothy. Timothy. Yeah. What the fuck? Confirmed Catholic. Yeah. Yeah. You didn't know don't that? know what this shit means. I didn't you get a new name. You get to choose yeah. a new name. Yeah. Yeah. No cool. shit. Really? Yeah. Really? But, but, but no, How it, do it, I know it's this? like why didn't you oh, fucking tell me this? Like you name yourself after a saint. Kevin. You choose a saint name. Yeah. No. I Paul like Walker? Luke. Would you have been Paul Walker? Luke would yeah. be cool. It's, it's, I would have been Paul Walker Scarpino. No, I want to keep Optimus no, because it this keeps is my the problem. name. You got to pick si- like a This is how yeah. seriously yeah. I if took. I could be Vernon this is how Stokes seriously Austin. I took <laughs> a confirmation is that when it came around, you have to choose a saint name. And I said Clark. 
And they're like, there's no St. Clark. And I'm like, Bruce. And <laughs> they're like, there's no. And then I finally look through Kyle a L. fucking thing of saints. And I was like, Tim for Tim Drake. Timothy. There you go. Good. I'm named after the third Robin in Jesus' eyes. <laughs> Congratulations to me. <laughs> D- <laughs> DC through and through, my friend. Yeah, mine mine was after my best friend when I was a kid. Aww. Yeah. I was like, I like Patrick a lot. He was cool. No, Patrick, I'll be Patrick. Patrick. Can't go wrong yeah. with I like <laughs> Patrick a lot. I don't know. Well, masturbating is fun. So yeah. is it a sin? I don't know, but I enjoy it it's a lot. It's not a sin. It's not a sin. How often do you think of sins, though, period? I mean, I don't... I, do, how often do I think about that? Yeah, how, long do you think, how often do you think about sins? It doesn't yeah, cross exactly. my mind. Really? Is okay, because as a Catholic, it's all the time. You still are you are you a practicing Catholic? Uh, uh, just, uh so you yeah. just have the sorry, leftovers. No, I'm sorry, I just, uh, you have that leftover sort first of guilt. The floral like prints and now this burden. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, well, it, okay. So th- it's it's always a weird thing to think about because like th- there's different ways to come up and then try to become become a good person. Like there, there's a lot of different upbringings to like try to become a better person than the way you did before. The way I came up was I was raised to think that my come was sin. Um, mm-hmm. as a Catholic, well, I mean, you eat a lot of spicy shit, so it yeah. actually very well may be <laughs> at this point. Oh God! Um, but no, like I, I was, I was raised with in a conservative Catholic family and had all these conservative values, and they like whether the reasons I was taught these were because I should genuinely be a good person or because like I'm afraid of going to hell. Mm-hmm. They were still taught to me, and like I feel like I'm the person I am today, and it'd be weird to think of the person I was if I wasn't told all this stuff like uh, like i feel like i'm i i try to be a good just friendly person to as many people as i can for the rest of my life because i was brought up this way and there, again there's different sure, ways to be brought but, up that way but. i mean my only argument against that is that like you were doing that because of out of fear not of actually right. wanting to be a good person and this is my problem in general where like where i'd see my mother struggle mm-hmm. with thinking she was a bad person mm-hmm. for doing things that you know, nine out of ten people were like, no, that's totally fine. But she had this deep ingrained guilt mm. of like Catholic guilt. breaking yeah. the fucking cardinal law where, yeah. you know, and what, my biggest problem is that, you know, when you when you start really buying into the letter of the Bible, it takes away the idea of free will and mm. that you're doing something because you want to be a good person, not or rather you're doing something because you fear what might happen to you, not because you want to be a good yeah. person. Actually, one of the biggest turning points in my life was uh, when uh, my my older brother's a year older than me. He's infinitely smarter than I am. But he told me uh, one day when, when we were kids, he told me that like being a good Catholic wasn't about doing something because you think you'll go to hell if you don't. It's about being a good person despite any of that. Like you're, you're not a, you, you, you don't like you don't be kind to people because you think if you don't like you're going to burn in hell, you'd be good. You'd be kind to people because it's the right thing to do be, to be kind to people, and mm-hmm. it made it made it not religion specific for me, which I think what is why it like resonated with me, sure. me so much. But like, yeah, it's just like I, I don't want to do good things just because I want people to like me or because I w- I think it'll be like or beneficial to me later. Or like yeah. when I when I die, like uh, um like something good's gonna happen to me. Like I want to be a good person because it makes everyone else's life better. Mm-hmm. So that got unnecessarily heavy for a masturbation conversation. It really no, but I mean once we started, yeah, yeah, once you roped in all the. <laughs> Once we went down that tunnel, no, that's not how that works. Yeah, no, there's, think of a there's no tunnel there. You're trying to make it gross. You're trying Once to make we climb that dirty. tower, there's no getting off. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, that okay. was better. All right, I like that. I'm going to give fine. you like a six out of ten. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jan, Being hell generous. yeah. According to the church, it's kind of funny. That's not a sin. You're fine. Just be a good person to people. That's all you got to do. Don't worry about it. Final topic. And more fan fiction. And more fan fiction. Write fan fiction. And read literatica. It's a dying art form. And oh. masturbate laying down. And then try it sitting up. Give it a go. Give it a go. I'll, I'll it give it a go. <laughs> Thank you. Just let me know. Come back. I'll let you come know. back tomorrow I'll let and report. You know. Or save it for next week's show. That's all open. It. I'll ask all right. You. Cool. <laughs> oh, Skype me in for that. <laughs> Final topic. Mm. It's selfish on my part. Yeah. I want. I, I we did the New Year's resolution thing. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I forget what I said. A bunch of bullshit. I already forgot. And started smoking drugs. Like even said I wouldn't smoke drugs. Uh I start. What I want to say about smoking drugs. <laughs> like sometimes you go back behind the school and you smoke a couple drugs. You know. I want to. I'm drugs. gonna. I'm gonna watch more movies. This okay. Year. All I right. Decided I'm gonna watch more Great. movies and I'm chronicling on my notepad on the phone every movie I watched this year. Okay. I have a good list going so far of things I've I've watched. This is done. This isn't looking forward. It's looking back. You know what I mean? Okay. Give me the list so far. And I put them in parentheses on where I saw them and information I need to know. Right. Great. So sleeping with other people. Amazon. Okay. Straight out of Compton, Amazon. Great. The Visit, Amazon. Propaganda Wars, Netflix. The Intern, Amazon. Goodfellas, and I put in there repeat. I've seen. I, I don't want people thinking I've never seen Goodfellas. Mm. Christina never seen it. So I've good. never and I was seen like, it. It's Obviously. so good. It's so good. Yeah. It's good. Amazon. Room theaters. Mm-hmm. Birdman, Amazon. That was mm-hmm. last night. I but I, here's the thing is like I feel like every time I go to the movies. I sit down. I'm like, I enjoy the movies. I should come to the movies more, and I want to do that more too. That's what I've decided. If I don't, if I, on the weekends, 
If I don't have a game to play, because you know how I'm in those, I'm mm-hmm. in those to play. I want to go out Sunday morning and go to the movies. All right. I, I, you know I love that Sunday morning matinee. It's the Come old with person. me. It's the old Come guy. do it. I will go. And I'm going. Sean Finnegan will always be down. Sean Finnegan will always be down. Always. Tuesday, my favorite uh, zombie movie and Lex Luthor and Michael Rosenbaum's favorite zombie movies playing up here in San Francisco at the Alamo Draft House. I'm going to go see that if you want to come. Wait, which one? Uh, Return of the Living Dead. I don't think I've ever seen that. You should come. Okay. It's five bucks. Ten o'clock. At the Alamo? Yeah. Cool. Uh, so I'm going to go see more movies. Uh, but the problem is I feel like every time I go to the movies and they show previews, I'm like, fuck. Those all would be movies I'd see. And then you jump ahead. I'm sitting there at the Amazon thing. And I've, you know, this has happened for years now. I'm like, I got nothing to watch. Mm. Last night I was like, I want to watch a movie. I watched Birdman. I was like, I don't enjoy this. Birdman was not good. How did this, I, I didn't enjoy no, Birdman. Bird, Birdman's one of those films where you know it's important. You know it's good. But about halfway through, you're just like, oh, fuck uh, yeah, I enjoyed it a lot. Like, yeah. I'm a film student, though. Like, Oh, no. So don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I'm not saying I, it was I bad. Well. I'm just like, I might like have actually movie. just said it was bad. Um, but I don't mean it's bad in terms of it was a bad movie. It just wasn't connecting for me. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's, to me, it was like, um, it's it's very much in the same vein as The Hateful Eight, where I'm like, mm. this is a good movie. I understand why people are going to like it. I probably never want to. Ever I watch didn't it like again. it. I never want to watch it again. He played. Yeah, yeah. No, well, okay. God, so you guys like, are so wrong. Um. Okay. Not not to. Okay. I'm not to, not to hate too much on the hateful eight because I I did like I watched it. I was like, oh, that was a movie. Um. <laughs> it, it it was one of those things where it's like, oh man. Okay. Maybe maybe I'm like weird about this digital thing, but like I used to be that film student who's like, film forever. We're shooting on 35 millimeter. It's a dying art. I'm gonna preserve it. And then you know, like a couple years later, I'm like. Digital is fucking cool. Make yeah. digital shit. Like when yeah. you're doing digital, like it puts the power in the hands of everybody. You don't need to be some like weirdo film guy to make a movie. You can just make a movie, and that is so cool. Like that, like that's that's like the newest thing in 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 the world where everyone can tell a story. And to be so like adamant about um about wanting something to be filmed, wanting to be that pure classic experience, it was just, it felt like a backward step. Mm-hmm. And also, it was shot on seventy millimeter. Everything outside looked really cool, but then the rest of the movie took place inside of a cabin. What are you gonna get on seventy millimeter in a, in a cabin, though? The Revenant, though, like that. That I mean, I feel like I had to compare the two because there were two westerns coming out at the same time. The Revenant kicked ass. Yeah. So the Revenant is one of those other is. And let me clarify. I liked Hateful Eight. It's just when I think of movies that I want to see again, that's just one I, of those. Yeah, to be like, clear. Same with The Departed. I love The Departed. I'm just like, uh, or not Departed. Excuse me. Uh, Wolf of Wall Street. I'm like, you know. I'm good. Yeah, yeah I saw yeah, that. Yeah. It was great. I don't necessarily know because you brought up because uh, Goodfellas, which I probably watch once a year at yeah, least. Yeah. It's on. I'm like, it's one of those like, one of those cherished movies where like, if it's on, you're like, fuck, oh, I gotta watch this whole thing. That's now. what happened. It, it, the end was on, and Christine was, and I was like, oh, and I was like, oh, I fucking love this movie. She's like, I've never seen it. I stopped it, and we went and got it off Amazon. It's just mm-hmm. like, you'll watch it in full the way it's meant to be seen. God, it's so good. But when um, I walked out of Hateful Eight, the first thing I said to Sean, and he was like, so what do you think? I'm like. I fucking loved it. Never want to see it again. Yeah. Like, I'm good. Like, that, that experience was awesome. Yeah. Um, I mean, to me, like, and, and going back to Birdman for a second, to me, both of those movies had two things in common, which I felt like they were actually, like, I was actually watching a stage play. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't do well with stage plays. I just don't. I don't like the sort of tableau nature of them. I don't like the fact that you feel like you're, it's just a different art form that I just don't vibe with necessarily. And I've seen some really good plays, but and I've seen some great musicals. But at the same time, it's just... The pacing is so much slower than a movie, even on a subconscious level mm-hmm. where, the uh, you know, movies seem to move for a number of different reasons, a lot of which actually happen on the subconscious level where, like, you're seeing a cut every two seconds in a mm-hmm. film. It didn't used to be that way. So that's why a lot of people can't go back and watch old films from, like, the, the 30s, 40s, and 50s because they used to just shoot a big wide shot. And then every once in a while oh, they right. had to maybe because the camera was like the size of a fucking room that had to, like, maybe move it around, right? Um, so the idea of the modern edit of like has just sped up as the time has gone on, and now when you watch an action film, it's like every half a tenth of it, a millisecond. It can be done like right. That. It's just harder sure. to do. It. Like you, you take something like uh, Twelve Angry Men. Sure, that was a movie. Like that's a movie that's forty years old, but it's it's one of Again, the most tense stage things play. There. It's yeah. very Based much stage a stage play. play, but it is um, tense all the way through. Yeah, sure. And I'm not saying you can't do it, but at the same time, like there, I think I'm just. I'm a little too through, far down that rabbit hole of modern technology sure. to really go back and appreciate or gain. I mean, I'm not that's something I can never, never actually gain an appreciation for it, but it's harder for me to gain an appreciation for older movies like that. Right. And I always, I love movies like Casablanca and I love movies like, um, like 12 angry men, but at the same time, I don't crave those experiences. Right. And yeah. so when I see those replicated in the modern day with things like Birdman, which was a, literally a play within a play yep. or a movie within a play, a play within a movie within a play. Down, it's it's going to break your brain. Yeah, it's going to hurt it's, me. <laughs> um, it's cool. And I'm like, cool. This this started as gimmicky for me and is actually fairly like has gone some, to something different um, in that regard. But also I just 
when I look at that, I'm like, you know, he's a phenomenal filmmaker, but I look at Birdman and then I look at The Revenant and I'm like, okay, fucking A. Like, this yeah, right. is something that really, whereas this was cool and like his, his, his whole purpose was to actually go from scene to scene like you would see in a stage play where like when you see a stage play, you actually see like you see the lights moving, you see the characters go off and then seamlessly come back on as another cue comes mm-hmm. up, right? And so you see that mirrored in how he edited the film where like mm-hmm. he walks out of the street and there is a cut, but you don't really see it, right? Yeah. Same same way, you don't, you kind of see someone moving something, but you don't really, and, and the whole thing's glossed over. The Revenant's a whole different fucking beast and that you have to see that Absolutely. in the theaters. Well, here's the thing. Yeah, Revenant is the top of the list. Yeah. This weekend, if I don't have like a Marvel Avengers, I'm going to go see it. Okay. Otherwise, I'll play video games. Yeah. But like this is just, you, I, you just threw me for a bit of a curve and I want to clarify for anybody at home sure. out there and, the guy who did Birdman isn't doing Revenant, is it? No, it was Alejandro Inarritu. Yeah, he is. Does Revenant? Oh, yeah. very interesting. Wow, so that's okay. why it's so fascinating. I, that, this Birdman was on my key, my Amazon watch list, and mm-hmm. I got to it last. And I'm like, oh yeah, why not? It wasn't at all because like, well, I'm gonna see the Revenant. And I gotta see this. I mean, that's not a prequel by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> uh, I know, Nick. But well, uh, they they could have existed in the they're same. They're probably in the same cinematic, cinematic universe. universe. Yeah, yeah. Cinematic that's universe. true. That's true. Just a, just a, a few years apart. Um, no, the Revenant it pushes the envelope in a different direction. That's why it's cool, and that's why I got all respect respect Inarito because he tries to do something different, right? I mean, he's he's presenting film in, in a way the Inarito verse in the very <laughs> yeah in, in the in the multiverse that is the Inarito. I, I can this is so hard not to say verse is perfect. Uh, Inarito verse, uh, but you know the Revenant pushes it. You know, there's a lot of we've talked about it before, but there's a lot of media that came out around the production of that film. It was a very hard production. Um, you know, shot unions got involved. Light. Shot entirely with natural light. Mm-hmm. Shot, you know, in the cold in those rivers. They had issues with um, the movie going over budget and over schedule, and the unions got involved. And Leonardo DiCaprio apparently wasn't all that happy, um, evidently. But it and I, so I hear all that stuff about it. And I'm like, oh man, this is like. What a tragic fucking misuse of resources. And then you yeah. see the film and, and you're works, like, yeah. fuck. Like, all that sweat, the actual physical labor that the crew went through actually shows on screen, which is saying something. Yeah. Whereas, I mean, I think it did with Birdman, too, but that was not sure that hard of a movie to film. So here's what I want to do. I want everybody to pick one movie that I can get off of. I could get, like, I can get from a thing not get off of you asshole. whatever just, not a movie theater is what I mean I'm already well, gonna go see well, Revenant I'm already because Tim's the popcorn making the needs movie more later tonight horizontally on his <laughs> yeah yeah you wanna see it's that gonna be good. so I need a movie each one of you recommends that I see it can be your favorite movie it can be whatever but it needs to be well, something I, mean, I haven't seen okay just of all time movies yeah you can toss oh. me something and you know me that's the thing you all know mm. me yeah mm. have you seen Unforgiven yes of course have you seen The Hunt for October no I think yeah. I think you'd like that. Periscope. What one one, one ping only. <laughs> um my I mean my my choice for you is the revenant, obviously. I hope you said that. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um have you seen You just said Hunt for Red October. That's Big Trouble in Little China. Of course. Fuck yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it as an adult. You know what I mean? You know you'd probably still like it. I watched it two nights ago. Yeah, well, as a kid, I had no idea what the up. fuck was happening. These people are exploding. No, no, you don't, you don't cool. have any ideas. So okay. What's okay. going on with that? Vernon, what do you got for me? Okay, right, wait, do you like horror movies? Yes, very much so. Okay, and uh, have you seen 1982's The Thing? Uh, not in a long time. It's First of all, that, that one... Is that's, that another one I need to watch? That's adult? like, it's... Oh my God, it's so good. It's, um... It's Carpenter. Uh, yeah, it's Carpenter. Carpenter yeah, John Carpenter. Russell, and like, yeah. it, 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 it's, it's one of those, like, movies that influenced later horror movies, mm-hmm. and you can see that. But the the weird film student one I want to give you is, is The Fall. Okay. Um, Which one's that? It's, um... Oh god! It's it it takes place. It's a period piece that takes place in ni- the nineteen twenties, and it's about um, a stunt man who had a back back injury. So he's uh, so he's in this nineteen twenties hospital, and he develops a friendship with this uh, with this immigrant girl who broke her arm, like picking uh, oranges in California. And the entire story is him telling her a story in order to gain her trust, so that she can give him morphine pills so that he can overdose. Um, and that sounds really, really dark, but it's um, it's one of those movies that was like very, um, very like stalwart about like getting the shot and making it look as amazing as possible. So like, there's these, it's like the most cinematographically, it's, sorry, film student, it's the most cinematographically inspiring movie I've ever seen, and it's mm. like it's very the same with the Revenant, like mm. like we're gonna wait here until the time to get the shot, and it's going to be beautiful, and like the 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 like like thematically, it's just. Uh, and I'm not sure if like you guys are the same, the same about this, but like it deals with like the origin of ideas and like how you come up with an idea, and like that's some of the things that's been like big for me, especially with all the weird YouTube stuff I'm doing. Like, where does an idea come from, and how yeah. does that become a thing? And like it explores that thematically. So, watch the fall. Okay. So it was signed off on by Spike Jones. 
I, mm. I know him. Yeah. He did a Weezer video. He's very t- he's very talented mm. from that Weezer video. Definitely. He did two, actually, but I'm, of course, thinking of, you know, Buddy Holly. Sure. I am, you know, I'm not that type of movie guy. I like, I like Which movies Which Fast and the lot. Furious should he I mean, see? He are, but that's the thing. You I mean, know I've he seen already knows about that. And that is the thing that I preach of, like, people should watch this as a joke, but also because it does get They're not bad movies. movies there. But the thing, and I don't know if you've seen this, you might have, but the movie that I, like, will just recommend as being fucking amazing. Well, first off, Django, you've seen already? Yeah, of course, Okay, because yes. Django, I fucking love. Django's amazing. I don't think I could recommend you a movie that I'm like, oh, you haven't seen this, but Black Dynamite? No, I haven't seen Black oh Dynamite. Oh, my God. Oh, there you go. okay. There you go. Well, that's it, then. Black Dynamite, when you watch that movie, you're going to be like, I understand how Tim's head works a little bit better. Okay. It's just fucking... It's gold. Okay. Such gold. So you, Revenant, which we already knew, that's a cheat. That's not one that counts. But for, for Hunt for October, The Thing, The Fall, Black Dynamite. Yeah. And I, want you to, I don't want you to think that I only watch movies with The uh, as the first part. No, it's fine. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I understand. That's I just do. the I best movies too. Exclusively. <laughs> the Point Break. <laughs> the Point Break. <laughs> the Roadhouse. The Roadhouse. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much is watch anything early, Patrick Swayze. You're good. Thank you for your advice. Ladies and gentlemen home, of course, I want your advice. So leave me recommendations in the comments. Maybe for some of them, I'll tell you if I've seen them. Others, I won't come back to this video to check the comments. Because that's how YouTube works. Way to incentivize people to share, Greg. No, do it in the beginning. You do it in the beginning when the video is hot and fresh. You share share three weeks from now. (laughs) Share three weeks from now. I got other videos to be doing. I got to Who's minding the PS I Love You store? That's what I want to know. Greg is. He's in those comments checking it out. You know what I'm saying? What? My don't, don't, don't. Okay. That's fine. This episode is brought to you by Loot Crate. <laughs> Would you classify yourself as a geek, gamer, or pop culture nerd? Then this is the subscription box for you. For less than $20 a month, you get six to eight items of gamer and pop culture licensed gear, apparel, collectibles, unique one of a kind items, and more. Make sure you head to lootcrate.com slash kind of funny and enter the offer code kind of funny to save $3 on any new subscription. We want to believe with the revival of the X Files that we've all been waiting for, there has never been a better time for an invasion, an alien invasion. It's an alien invasion. Did I say something right now? No. You say, that was good <laughs> okay. enough. That, was, that, that worked. <laughs> Packed with the thrill of an extraterrestrial encounter, this month's crate features exclusive items from the X-Files, Alien, the Fifth Element, and Space Invaders, including a contest-winning shirt and a terrifyingly cute plush. So hop on your power loader and head over to lootcrate.com slash kindoffunny. Enter the offer code kindoffunny to save $3 on your new subscription today. Thank you, Loot Crate. Thank you, Tim. Thank you. Thank you, Vernon. Hey, thank you. Thank you, Nick. Everybody, thank go you. subscribe to Hot Pepper Gaming. Follow Vernon's Twitter account. Thank you. At Vernon Shaw. Unfollow the Hot Pepper Gaming Twitter account that's getting too much credit. Way too much. No, oh. wait. Follow both. Do, do both. <laughs> and thank, thank fuck you. those pizza bites. Guys, thanks so much for having me. Like, yeah, fuck those Tarantinos. Like, fuck those Tarantinos. <laughs> fuck what are they called? Tarantinos. Fuck Tarantinos, 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 Tarantinos pizza. You, you, you put eight Tarantinos in a circle on your, on your plate, and you put it in the microwave for two and a half minutes, and then yeah. the lava hunt. Yeah. You yeah, lava Tarantinos. Hunt? Lava Hot. Oh, Lava Hot. I thought you eat Lava Hunt. That's like a thing. But yeah, guys, can I just say thanks for having me on? This is like a, no, this dude, like a dream come true. I had a lot of fun doing this. No, we love you. You know that. You're welcome oh. anytime. Oh, thank you. Until next time, wear floral prints. Hey, Greg. Sorry, oh, yeah, I'm just really, really excited to be here. I just want to check in on this issue real quick while yeah, we're yeah, uh, yeah. before we start. Yeah. Who's going to give it to me? X is going to give it to oh. me. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I love that that's in the do, Deadpool uh, trailers. Do it's so okay, just, uh, it's everywhere uh, now. Yeah, we're we're going to talk about that. It's okay. my first topic. Like, but I, that smile, guy. smile, look pretty, look pretty. All right, Tim, you smile less this time? No, you're smiling more. Am I smiling? <laughs> oh, this will be the blooper. It's him taking the photo. That's funny. Yeah. Right. That's funnier. Yeah. I thought you said it was going to be the blooper was going to be him asking for the photo. No, this is the whole thing. That sounds dumb. Is it too short? Just the photo. Is it too short? Nick, you're really uh, facing there. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's just. <laughs> That's what Nick does. That's Nick Scarpino. He got a fucking Man wide about lens on that motherfucker, dude. We look like fish eyed. It's great. Cool. It makes my face look especially more spooky. I'll tweet that momentarily. Thank you. Okay.